Welcome to the Mountain West Network on Stadium. The Weber State Wildcats getting set to take on the San Diego State Aztecs in the opener for both programs. Preseason poll for the Mountain West, San Diego State projected number two in the West Division, though they've won two of the last five Mountain West titles. Hello to everyone. We're so glad you're with us. Sorry, Wolf alongside former Notre Dame star tailback Darius Walker. And Darius, this game is week one, but it's critical for both programs for very different reasons. Yeah, really, when you look at the Wildcats for them, it's really business as usual. They're coming into this season with a lot of momentum from last year. Back-to-back -back conference titles, they're used to winning. They expect to win here today. And on the other side for the Aztecs, it's really redemption. We all saw what happened in the second half of last season. Things did not end the way that Rocky Long and his staff wanted to. They're ready to get back to business here today. Should make for a good game. And Weber State, just so people don't sleep on them, at the FCS level, they're one of the best programs in America. They come in preseason number eight in the country at that level. And this is a team that they just seem like, this is like the Super Bowl for them. A chance to come in and beat a Mountain West team in their building. They really have nothing to lose, but you mentioned the success they had. All of that is predicated off of their players, though, as well. A number of guys are all conference guys in the big sky every year. This team is for real. Make no mistake. I would not be surprised if this game comes down to the fourth quarter. Now, San Diego State's known for their running backs, but let's let's be serious here. The best running back on the field today may be Josh Davis for Weber State. He's been fantastic and outstanding. I mean, his red shirt freshman year last year was incredible. He had over 1,300 yards. But what stands out to me, Ari, is the average per carry at 5.4. He breaks off big runs day in and day out with these games. He's a special talent. It's his vision and his balance that really separate him from other backs in the conference. And he can break away from people too. He can do it all. Now we focus on the defense. They got great bookend defensive ends in Adam Rodriguez and Jonah Williams. Yeah, Rodriguez came in a little undersized after his freshman year. Came in around 230. He's worked on his body this offseason. Is now over 250. I think that's going to bode well for him and his productivity, especially here today. On the other side for Jonah Williams, he is an anchor on that side. 280 pounds. He's a big man. Very physical and aggressive. Both these defensive ends are going to be in the backfield. They're going to give the Aztecs some problems on offense today. For San Diego State, their head coach Rocky Long is the all-time winningest coach in Mountain West history. But even he knows that he has to change with the times. So we're going to see a new look offense for them that includes a lot of spread elements. Something he's never done before in his head coaching career. So here's a quote from Rocky Long regarding the spread formation and his thoughts on this season. The offense will look a whole lot different than last year. That doesn't mean our philosophy has changed, but we're going to be in a lot more spread formations and our quarterbacks are going to be in shotgun a lot more. So big changes for them. Though the plan is they still want to run the ball behind their great tailback, Jawan Washington. And Washington's legit. I mean, he's in the same vein of some running backs that you may remember in Aztecs history from Rashad Penny to Donnell Pumphrey. Smaller in stature, breakaway speed. He is a threat to go the distance whether, whenever the ball is in his hand as a wide receiver or as a running back. He's outstanding. Now, you see the numbers there, 999 yards. He would have easily been over 1,000 last year if he didn't miss four games due to injury. He is healthy and ready to go. Now, Yava Casino, this guy is an All-American candidate, and this guy's going to be playing on Sundays real soon. And you really see it in his ability to be able to close one-on-one. -on -one. You see how aggressive he is when he's at an offensive player. He brings them all down by himself. Over 127 total tackles last year. This guy's productivity is off the charts. He's awesome. Special player defensively. So we are proud to introduce the third member of our broadcast team who's down on the field, Kristen Balboni. Ari Darius, it is so great to be back with you guys here on the sidelines. I know we are all excited about week one, and we are also all excited to be back here with you on Facebook. So if you're watching this game, you know it is broadcast exclusively on Facebook Live. If you've never seen one of those games before, let me tell you what to expect. It means that we want to hear from you the entire game. I'm going to be reading your comments. So are Ari and Darius in the booth. We got some polls coming your way throughout the broadcast. We really want you as involved in this game as everyone here at the stadium. It's going to be a lot of fun. You can also, if you want to see your picture in this game while your teams are playing, you can post on Instagram. All you got to do is take a picture of yourself, maybe where you're watching from, how you're enjoying this game. We've seen pets in, uh, in jerseys before. Totally okay with that. You just post on Instagram. You use the hashtag WSU. VSSDSU, as in Weber State versus San Diego State, WSU, VSSDSU, and you will see your picture on this broadcast. So, comments, polls, 
Instagram pictures. We got it all coming your way in addition to a great game. So cannot wait to get into all of that when normally you'd be seeing commercials. So we got a lot coming your way. I'm going to toss it back up to Ari and Darius to get you ready for the rest of the game before we kick off. Looking forward to hearing from you throughout this game and both these teams fired up and ready to go. Jay Hill, the head coach, in his sixth year at Weber State, 36 to 26 mark, back to back 10 win seasons. For the Aztecs, if you follow the Mount West, you know Rocky Long real well. He's now in his ninth year at San Diego State after a really successful run at New Mexico. Three time Mount West Coach of the Year, you see that. And we are ready to play football. Weber State's going to kick things off. And Ari, you also got to remember that this is the first game of the season. So don't be surprised if we see a little bit of a slow start from each team or some penalties, some offside stuff. The Aztecs are going to be running a new style of offense in this spread. So we'll get a chance to see that here first. But it's going to be interesting to see how both teams start at the beginning of their season. Trey Tuttle to kick things off for the Wildcats. FCS against FBS. Big Sky versus Mountain West. Here we go. Juwan Washington, and he's going to stay put right where he is. And Ryan Agnew, senior quarterback, also a captain, six feet, 200 pounds. Last year, he had seven starts, went six and one as a starter. Through 10 touchdown passes, six interceptions. And we're going to. Can't wait to see them in the spread. I have to be like, what are I really watching a Rocky Long coach team? <laughs> Who knew that it would come to this? But with so many changes, especially at the quarterback position, with what they are doing in high school now, guys like Ryan Agnew, in high school he ran the spread. When you add that formation to your offense, it's really playing to what the guys are comfortable doing. Agnew looking to throw. He'll dump it down, and Washington with the catch at the 29-yard line a year ago. Washington had just 10 catches. He's a senior from Fort Worth, Texas. Part of a long lineage of great tailbacks at San Diego State. Got a lot of experience and also 27 career touchdowns. Agnew now in the shotgun. And it looked as though whatever he thought he was going on, hut two. They hiked it right away, and Weber State was all over it. San Diego State just didn't look ready. And Preston Smith comes down from the safety position. He's number seven. Watch him come on the outside. Beeline to Ryan Agnew. The rest of the cavalry shows up, and they're able to get him down. And it's not a surprise here early on, but the Aztecs put themselves in a tough situation in third and long now, forcing Agnew into a predictable situation where he's got to throw the football. They set up the screen. And that's well defended as they bring down Washington just across the 25. Abuaho makes the tackle and it forces a three and out for the Aztecs. Nice job defensively for the Wildcats. Not fooled by the new formation, the new spread that the Aztecs are running. Good job by Lafajo sniffing out the screen pass. Three and out for the Aztecs. Rashid Shahid is weights deep. And this guy is a game breaker. But he calls for the fair catch at his own 32 yard line. So a terrific start for the Wildcats. Get a look at Jake Constantine. He's a junior from Camarillo, California. There he is, number eight, 6'2, 200 pounds. Played junior college ball at Ventura College. Played 12 games a year ago. You see pretty good numbers, 61% completion percentage. Decent touchdown interception ratio. We may also see some Caden Jenks. He was the starter before he got hurt last year and Constantine took over. So first and 10 Wildcats. We're gonna keep it on the ground. Kyrie Woods comes up to make the stop. Shahib was the ball carrier there, and they'll use him on some jet fly sweeps, find different ways to get the speeds to the ball. A wonderful job in recognition there by the Woods coming down from his safety position. Now, he's their most aggressive defender. He's number 27. They moved him from corner last year. Now he's playing safety. 
Good job up and making a play quick on first down. Constantine completes it. And it's going to be three yards shy of the first down. Devin Cooley from Los Angeles just up the, up the road about two hours north. Makes the catch. He had 33 catches a year ago. He played as a true freshman. He's an excellent route runner, too. Consistent in terms of his ball play. So it's good to see him already showing up on the stat sheet. All right, third and three. Davis is the tailback. And he is a threat to catch it as well. They hand it off, no place to go. Aztecs come up with the stop. Great play up front. Keyshawn Banks, sophomore from New Mexico, to both teams, three and out. Banks is coming down from his defensive end position, unblocked. Looked like there was a miscommunication happening on offense. You see the offensive line slides down to the right, leaving that defensive end wide open. And Banks comes in and makes a big play on third down, of course, a punt. But not a particularly good one, and no chance for a return for Jordan Bird. All right, I hear we, we get a chance to hear from Kristen. Kristen, what, what do you got for us? Hey, Ariel, I'm down here checking out the Facebook comments. We got people chiming in already. Madison says, let's go Wildcats. Sharon says, let's get it, SDSU. And I mentioned a few minutes ago that we got something new, which allows everyone to chime in. We have polling. So we're going to have our first poll. Um, and it is just simply, who are you rooting for? We love to know where everyone is watching from, who you are rooting for. So you're going to see the poll come up on your screen um, if you want it. And if you want to vote for it, go ahead and press who you're rooting for so that we can find out where everyone is coming from. Always love to see that. So go ahead and vote in that. We'll show you that in just a minute, the final results. Uh, Maxwell also says, go San Diego State. Burnaby says, thanks, Facebook, for showing the game live. Uh, Burnaby, first of all, I love your name, and you are welcome. Happy to be here with you. Michael says, go Aztecs. So remember to go ahead and vote in that poll. We're going to be having them come out um, throughout the entire game. we got a lot of fun questions lined up for you guys in these breaks since you know we don't show commercials. And like I said earlier, the other way that you can contribute in this game and see yourself on the broadcast is on Instagram. You just use that hashtag. WSU vs SDSU. Now Ari has already been putting it to good use, and I don't know if anyone can top this picture right here. Um, that is Ari and his daughter Layla. She's upstairs in the broadcast booth, and they use the hashtag. Um, Ari, how is Layla enjoying her first game? Uh, so far, she hasn't had a lot to offer in terms of a <laughs> verbal <laughs> contribution. Yeah, that's right, that's right. Still working on speaking, on but uh, she likes the view. It's a I, good view. I, like I said, I, I think it's going to be hard to top this picture, but that is a great one to start out with. She is absolutely adorable, and I can't wait to hear her on the broadcast call. So, again, <laughs> make sure you are sending in your pictures using that hashtag that you just saw there. You join the conversation. We love to know where everyone is watching from, who you are rooting for. We love to see what you think. We'll certainly be reading your comments. And, hey, go vote in that poll so we can see where everyone is checking in from, who you're rooting for. Appreciate it, Kristen. Second series for San Diego State. Unable to get a first down on the opening drive. Agnew's going to be under center here on the first and ten play. This is going back to the old style of offense that the Aztecs are used to. Quarterback under center. It's also something similar for Washington that he's used to in terms of his vision. Washington with it. And he'll push the pile up to about the 37-yard line. Gain of a few on first down. Jonah Williams in on the stop. Senior from Idaho, one of the captains. All big sky player and an NFL prospect. That's You're looking at him right there, Jonah Williams. This defensive line for the Wildcats is really the strength of their defense. All four guys, plenty of experience, plenty of talent up front. Agnew's going to go down and <laughs> gets the ball out. That was a circus-like move to get the ball to Washington's turn. What would have been a negative play into a positive play. 
Nice heads up play from Agnew here. Looked like he was stopped dead in the water. You'll see Connor Mortensen, number 35. He's going to get hands on Agnew. I mean, how about that was like a Brett Favre decision, <laughs> right? Well done, Ryan Agnew. Nice job. Turns nothing into something. See, I mean, the spread, he's just fooling us. Third and two, and they got the goal line offense out there. Washington bounces it to the outside. Nowhere to go. Wildcats all over it. And there is a flag down on the play. Mortensen again in on the stop. Junior from Overton, Nevada. Holding number 35. Offense. That penalty is declined. Fourth down. So they penalty got Brady, declined, yep. Brady Vasquez, the fullback, come in. Now he did a nice job. He's number 35, split off to the side of this. Good job walling his guy in, but when he takes him to the ground, you can see a little bit of cloth there with that right arm. Generally, when a guy goes down like that and you fall on top of him, a lot of times that's a signal that holding could have happened. Good call from the officials. The punt is a good one. Hecklin punts it down, and it's recovered, or caught, rather, at the 14-yard line. So neither offense has been able to get going here through the first three drives of the game. You see Dave Schramm in there. He's their offense coordinator. We've gotten to know him because he spent a bunch of time, Darius, in the Mountain West. Yeah, he was at Fresno State for a while, spent some time there. From San Diego, too. He's a local guy here. Has done an excellent job coaching this offense. In the pistol, Constantine. Boy. Going to give it to Davis, but we got flags before the play. It's going to be a false start on the offense. Number 88, offense, five yard penalty, still first Typically down. Typically, you see penalties like this at the beginning of the year, Ari, just because it's it's hard to simulate a game atmosphere in practice. True. You go through training camp, you go through all that, but like when the bright lights hit you and there's thousands of people in the stadium, it's just a different feeling. So sometimes you can't hear the snap count, or the snap count may be a little bit different. We just see that sometimes in week one. The question really is who can who can adapt and change and focus quicker. First and 15. Spread formation. Constantine gets it out quickly. Gain of three yards, maybe Aztecs get there in a hurry. The catch made by Josh Davis. Troy Cassidy amongst the tacklers for San Diego State. Cassidy is another one of these defensive players for the Aztecs who's switching position. Last year he was a corner. Now he's moved up to the linebacker position. A lot of that can help him in coverage because he's had that corner experience, able to make a play on the outside there. Second and 13. Constantine's going to keep it, and then he'll dive to the ground at the 14-yard line. It's going to set up third and long. Now, oftentimes at the start of the season, Darius, it's fair to say that the defenses are ahead of the offenses just because that's just the way football is. Sometimes it just takes a while for the offense to get going. Well, the offense is all about timing. It's all about being able to understand cues and read the defense. That'll dictate what's happening. So, yes, for offense, you're slightly slower in adapting to a fast-paced game and getting going early in the season because of that. But the good ones really settle themselves down and do what they do best. I'm really surprised that we haven't seen a heavy dose of Josh Davis yet for the Wildcats. Rocky Long 3-3-5 defense. You never know where guys are coming from. Five are coming, Constantine gets it out, looking to go deep down the field, fight for it, and the Wildcats come up with it. Devin Cooley, the catch. He goes over Barku to make the play. Cooley continuing to shine here for the Wildcats. Played a lot as a true freshman last year, but Constantine's gonna get this ball up, and this is a jump ball. You got a guy, Devin Cooley, at 6'1". He's got the height advantage, able to go up and get the ball at its highest point. Textbook. Wonderful job, good pitch and catch for the Wildcats. One thing I like there is that he didn't push off. His hands were on the defender, but That's he right. didn't extend his arms. And he had, it was wonderful timing too with waiting to get to the ball at its highest point when it came down. That's a mature play from a young wide receiver. Davis, no place to go, and he's smothered in the backfield, a loss of three yards on the play. 
And that's one thing that San Diego State does really well is disrupt plays on first and second down. When you got a guy like Sam Hines, number 69, that big body in the middle who's able to sift and get through untouched there. We've seen this a couple of times for the Wildcats on their offensive line. Miscommunication on who to block and which way the offensive line is supposed to slant. I believe there you meant Miles Cheatham there. 68 was in on the play. 68 and 69 both in there. Cheatham was able to make that particular play. Second long. And Davis, no place to go. Now, Darius, Weber State has to know that running the football against San Diego State is not going to be easy. It's not going to be something that they're used to at the FCS level because the guys at San Diego State are just bigger and stronger. Well, the defense, too, they really predicate themselves, the Aztecs do, on running a solid defense. Rocky Long is one of the best in the Mountain West for that reason. He's got the long tenure because of that and their defense. But the real point is that they want to try to run the football, at least from the Wildcats' perspective, to keep the defense honest. And also their best player on offense is Josh Davis. They've got to figure out different ways to get him the football that may not necessarily require handing him the football up front. Five-yard penalty. Still third down. So that's on Justin Malone, and just for all the good people at Stadium, I want you to know it's not our Justin Malone who works for Stadium. <laughs> Shout out to yeah. Jay Malone. What's up, sure. Justin? But second time we've seen that in this series, false start on the offense. The Wildcats really needing to get things going here. We've seen some miscues on the offensive line in terms of communication, a couple of false starts. they really got to settle in here. They're going to have any chance to stay in this football game. They need to settle in. Third and long. Time. That's almost picked off. Great defense by San Diego State. It's Kyrie Woods, one of the safeties. This is a miscommunication between Constantine and Shahid. Shahid looked like he's running a go route. It's supposed to be a 10-yard stop, and you don't see Shahid stop until after he's about four or five yards down the field. A little bit of a miscommunication on what the route particularly was there. Doug Lloyd on the punt for the Wildcats. Much better punt this time. Jordan Bird. And he tiptoes up the right sideline, and the Aztecs will start out at their own 18-yard line. You can see yourself live right now on the Watch Stadium's Facebook page. We are looking for the most loyal fans in college football. Show your team spirit by using the hashtag Hashtag WSU versus SDSU. Like Stadium on Facebook for all the latest conference news and highlights. And we want to talk to a real expert about these things. So we go to Kristen Balboni. Ari, I don't know. You're stealing my bid over there. You're doing it better than I can. So <laughs> we'll have you doing play-by-play -play and doing all of the Facebook updates as well. Um, no, I just wanted to go ahead and share those poll results that we asked everyone in the last break. We'd love to know where everyone's watching from and who you're rooting for. So we put it in a poll, and the poll results have come back. 68% of the fans that were watching um, were going for San Diego State. Weber State bringing up the rest of the votes. And I'm sure there are people that are just watching it for fun, right, too? Um, we got to put that option in there next time, no doubt about it. So we're going to keep those polls coming. Heard that we had over 1,300 votes in our first ever poll, so that is awesome. Keep those coming, and as Ari said just a minute ago, you can use that hashtag if you want to see yourself on this broadcast. You just post on Instagram using that hashtag, WSUVSSDSU, and our uh, intrepid producer, my producer uh, for Facebook, John, went out and got some tailgating scenes because that's the kind of hard-working individual he is. You know, part of his job is going out, seeing what's going on around here. It's our first time here, mine and John's, so we wanted to see what's going on. And it was a nice little tailgating scene. Happy to get to come here one time to SDCCU before the new stadium gets built, and hopefully a few more times before that happens. Had a nice warrior walk right there. That was actually led by Tim Delaney, who has the single game record for the Aztecs with six receiving touchdowns versus New Mexico State in 1969. He's still ranked sixth in San Diego State football history with 180 career receptions and 22 receiving touchdowns. So uh, nice to see him leading the warrior walk as the Aztecs walked into the game today. So I'm really enjoying my first time here, Ari, I know you're an old vet for all things San Diego State, but uh, I really like it here. Nice uh, to go through the tailgate on the yeah, way in. There's, there's a lot to like about everything that, about San Diego State football, and certainly we're going to talk about the new stadium with San Diego State Athletic Director John David Wicker 
at the half, and uh, it's it's not that far off. It's going to be a whole new world and a much better home field advantage for the Aztecs having their own stadium. Good play fake from Agnew, and they get it on the outside. Jesse Matthews with the catch. That Darius, this wide receiving group does not have a lot of experience. It's a lot of young guys. Yeah, Matthews is a guy who's a former walk-on from a year ago. So he's got that best hands, though, they say, after he's earned his scholarship and is really earning player time, playing time here today. But they're right. This wide receiver core was decimated from guys leaving from last year and yet un installed a new offense with some formations. Be interesting to see how these guys adapt. First down, Agnew. Looking for the tight end, it was bobbled, and the defender able to get a hand in there. Austin Tesh able to make the play. Tesh, an all-big sky player, now a four-year starter, former high school tailback. He does a wonderful job here in one-on-one -on -one coverage with Bellinger, the tight end, number 88. Tesh gets that hand in there and knocks it down. And the throw was on the wrong side of the body. Sure was. you got to get that football outside if you're Ryan Agnew. Inside to give your tight end and your receiver a chance. Pressure's coming, gets it out on time, and the catch is made at the 36. It'll make it a much more manageable third down situation. Eddie Heckard with the tackle on B.J. Busby, number 41. Busby's a guy that use him in the slot and on the outside. You'll see him come in motion some. Real quick twitch guy. How about the size Football on him? in his hands, yeah, 5, 8, 100. Pounds. Yeah, I saw 155. I was like, hold on, is that the kicker? <laughs> Third and three. And Agnew's pretty good if the play breaks down, so if they bring pressure, look for him to try to escape on his own. And flags before the play. And a couple of false starts on both sides here. False start, number 60. Offense, five yard penalty, still third down. Ismael guilty of the foul. He's really their leader on that offensive line, one of the few returning starters that they have. Preseason all Mountain West. They expect him to be one of the best centers in the country. Got to hold your water, as they say. Third and long. Agnew, nice pocket. It's breaking down. Agnew's going to take off, and he'll be well short of the first down. Stopped at the 33 by Preston Smith who's impressed already a couple of plays from the junior from Gilbert, Arizona. He's doing an excellent job of just being instinctive coming from his safety position. See him on the outside here, working against Kyle Spaulding, the offensive lineman. Nice job getting those hands up and bending back inside to get down Agnew. And the Aztecs really haven't gotten anything going on offense at all. Hadn't been able to feature Washington or really get the football down the field. Great punt by Hecklin and it's muffed. But Shahid is able to recover his own muff. Kyrie Woods was down there in a hurry. That was almost a disaster for the Wildcats, but they'll start deep in their own territory. But Shahid is really dangerous with the ball in his hands. But you got to look it all the way in. Not really sure what happened there. The ball hit him in his chest. Got to be able to come down with that. It looked like he judged it really right. You never want to be going backwards, Ari, if you can help it when you're catching that punt. You never want to be going backwards trying to catch the football. Always want to be coming forward. Let's go down to Chris. Hey, guys. Well, the first poll went so good. We got another one coming in for everybody. Of course, you, Ari, and Darius have talked plenty about Josh Davis and Juwan Washington, these two great running backs facing off in this game. Neither one has been able to quite get going yet. So our next poll question is, Who's going to finish this game with more rushing yards between those two guys? It's the same as last time. If you voted in the last poll, it's going to pop up on your screen. Just let us know what you think. So while we're waiting for those results to come in, Darius, I won't put you on the spot for that one since you're calling the game. But what do you like about these two guys and, and the way that they are able to do what they do in their style of play? Well, for Davis, he's been able to adapt really quickly. I mean, he was a redshirt freshman last year, put up over 1,300 yards. But 
to me, it's his balance. When he gets touched, when he gets pushed, when you get an arm on him, it doesn't impact him as it does some other back. So that's what's so impressive for him and I think why he's been so productive early in the system. And for Washington, it's the explosiveness. If there's a crease, if there's a small area for him to wiggle through, when he gets to that second level, he is faster than most backs in the country. That's what really separates him literally from the competition. But two really good solid backs, but you're right, Chris, and they haven't been able to get going here early. And I think part of that has been with the inconsistencies on both sides from the offensive line in terms of false starts. When you have those false starts, it kills drives, it stops momentum, it gets guys a little bit out of rhythm. So I think that's what's happening on both sides right now. Neither team has figured out, at least offensively, how to settle in. Yeah, that's such a good point, Darius. But something tells me what, at least one of those guys is going to, get go going to get going when you look at their numbers since they have been playing. All right, here are the results of the poll. 67% say Juwan Washington, 32% say Josh Davis. And, you know, it's funny, those poll results almost exactly match as we see it go to 68%. The results of the previous poll where 68% of the fans were watching um, and rooting for SDSU. So maybe there's something to that. I we know it, how I, each I, way is voting. I think <laughs> it may tell us that 68% of our audience is rooting for San Diego State <laughs> and the rest are rooting for Weber State. Out of the backfield, Kevin Smith brought down after just a gain of a yard. And that San Diego State defense, Darius, seems like they're everywhere right now. And you see so many black jerseys around the football. Kevin Smith this time is going to come out on a flank route. Good job. But look at all the different jerseys in there. Five and six different guys around the football. That's really Aztec defense right there. That's a Rocky Long special. Guys flying around and getting to the football. But it also shows you that they're respecting the Wildcats. When they get the football in their hands, they're making sure that everyone's playing fundamentals and sure up tackling. Cuts the tie out in the flat, and the tackle is made. That's a real good tackle because you're in that kind of space, and you don't have anybody else there to help you. But that's not the easiest job in the world. Tariq Thompson makes the play. Yeah, he's the best player they have on defense. A two-year starter. You're going to see him all over the field. But watch him. He's being blocked and he's going to fight off of the block. In order to bring the ball carrier down, he is an animal. 60 tackles last year. And he's on the Jim Thorpe watch list. That tells you that uh, the country thinks this guy can play. Preseason first team all Mountain West. Third and long. Three guys down, one guy up. We'll see if they bring pressure. They don't. Constantine. Able to dump it off to the running back. He's going to be well shy of the first down. Chris Jackson with the catch. He's tackled at the 16. Good job by Dwayne Johnson Jr. in there. Making a big play and a tackle. Problem for the Wildcats is you put yourself in a predictable situation in third and long on your side of the field. Nice nickel package that comes in for the Aztecs and they're able to keep everything in front of them. I have another defense. I have a poll question idea for Kristen. Why don't we go with which team will have more punts today? <laughs> it's certainly seeming like that right now. <laughs> First down is hard to come by. Bird. Who punts on both sides currently. And Bird, nice spin move and he gets it up to the 44 yard line. Now San Diego State in the 2018 season just didn't end the way they're accustomed to having seasons in. They're usually the strong running game, and they wear people out late in the year. But you see 0-4 last four games. Yeah, and they were 6-1 and in the first seven games. So really a drastic change for them midway through the year. Now, you got to point to the injuries and say, you know, the quarterback went down, Washington went down. They lost a number of offensive linemen. But still, the guys that were inserted that had the opportunity didn't step up to the level that they wanted to. Bell the ball carrier and no place to go. He's hit at the line of scrimmage. That's Chance Bell, sophomore from Burbank, California. We'll see three or four guys touch the ball, but Jawan Washington will be the featured back. And we'll see Bell some, 22 Chase. Jasmine's also going to be in there. We'll get a chance to run the football a little bit. And one of the things that I think gets lost sometimes in the spread, Ari, that might be a bit of a change for the running backs with the Aztecs is running the football out of shotgun. We'll get into that a little bit after this play. Agnew puts it up, and it was right on target. Smith, opportunity to catch that football, hit him in his hands. He's got to come down with this. You'll watch him on the outside. He's number 92. Ball fake from Agnew, gets the football up. 
both hands on the football. You got to come down with it. Now, you and I are from a slightly different generation. You're considerably younger than me. I got to say, first time I've seen a wide receiver with the number 92 on. Yeah, first time. They've got two guys yes. with number 90s. With the I'm like, aren't the those defensive Smith linemen? And 96. That's a close. Definitely different to see out there on the outside. Able to complete the pass, but really just a two-yard gain. Four down, do you consider going for it because you're near midfield, or they're going to go ahead and punt it away? It's the best field position that they've had all game. Well, thanks to their punter, the last punt was an exceptional punt, and we saw the muff. Well, I guess you just play field position game. Well, this spread formations might be new. Rocky Long is still always going to be old school and do what tradition will tell you to do. Always goes with conventional wisdom. I think it's a good call, though. And that will trickle into the end zone, so there'll be a touchback. Stadium is your new way to watch national sports. The only 24-7 network available on both television and digital devices without a cable subscription. Live and classic games, daily live studio, and original programming. Check your local listings or go to watchstadium.com. Stadium, a new way to watch sports. Welcome to the game. No score. Final I, mean, I know we've talked a court. lot about like the punts and the offense is not doing well. You also got to give kudos to both defenses, which is really what both these teams want to do well is play solid defense. Both teams lead with the defense. We're seeing a defensive matchup currently here in this first quarter. Constantine out of the shotgun. It's going to step up. Saw the pressure coming. He takes off, and he'll pick up a Wildcat first down. This has been the biggest difference between Constantine and Caden Jinks, his backup. Constantine can run with the football in his hands. Nice job of recognition there, seeing all the black jerseys bail out. You pull it down and get what you can. You also appreciate the slide protecting himself at the end. That's a heads-up play from an experienced quarterback. And it looked like he's played some baseball. You don't see the slide done that well very often from quarterbacks, <laughs> he right? He did do about he, 10 he, yards, he, yeah. He, he knew what he was doing. And then he get the ball to Shahid on the jet fly sweep. There's nobody moved by San Diego State. Just a gain of a yard and a half. Caden McDonald to tackle. Sophomore from Texas. I like the call there from offensive coordinator Dave Scram. Trying to figure out a way to get the ball in the playmaker's hands. Still slightly surprised they haven't tried to figure out a way to get Josh Davis on the outside. Whether that's putting him in motion, trying to run a screen to him. He's their bell cow. They need to lean on him in this tough situation. Somebody's got to have a spark here. Absolutely. Somebody's got to do something here to get something going on both sides in terms of their offense. A scoreless first quarter, and for those of you basketball fans, we've got something you're going to find pretty interesting here. Let's get to know Derrick Rose a little better. Derrick was 17 years old when he said, I'm going to save my family. I heard him say this. I said, how you gonna save your family? Watch. All this was for my fans. To get everything out, get it off my chest. It's good for you, man, because you never say shit. <laughs> Derrick Rose is maybe the best player in America. Unbelievable. Derrick Rose, another steal. Oh, Once he was in the league, it was just different. We had this amazing kid, an MVP. If you're an athlete from Chicago, the last thing you want to do is play in Chicago. As quickly as he exploded, it burned out. It's the first time that people are going to get to see like the real him. I want it to be real. I want it to be authentic. I want people to feel it. I want it to touch your soul. It was Chicago sports civil war. People wanted to tear him down. What's up? Get him out of here. Train him. I don't know my story. I don't know where I came from. I don't know any of that. I always was saving my real answers for something bigger. And I feel like this is what I was saving it for. Too big. Too strong. Too fast. Too good. Derrick Rose.
Welcome back. Set to start the second quarter. Rocky Long looking on. His defense has been outstanding thus far. Not a lot of total yards for either team. Again, trying to get it out into space to Davis and no place to go. We'll try to figure out a way to get this around the outside. You see Justin Malone here, number 88 at tight end. He's trying to set the edge and try to do whatever they can to get Josh Davis on the outside. I love the play call, but an excellent job on the defensive inside by Troy Cassidy keeping that football inside. I mean, that is really textbook art what they teach a defensive end. Never let anything get outside of you. Because he was able to push that ball back in, he had some extra teammates to make the play. Good job with team defense again from the Aztecs. Two teams combined in the first quarter for Darius for less than 100 total yards. The defenses have been the story thus far. And again, you, you warned everybody, it's it's, it's the opening game. They're going to be penalties. It's going to happen. It's going to be sloppy at times. For both sides, it will be a little sloppy. It's really just about who can make those corrections and get adjusted to game play, game atmosphere quicker. But it does seem that the offenses on both sides are just continuing to struggle with finding some rhythm. Okay, but how about this? All right, Juwan Washington has two carries for net zero yards. And Josh Davis has three carries for net minus five yards. You know so our kind of our open's yet. been just <laughs> tossed aside. Focus on the running back. Constant time. Deliver is, and that's off target. There was some contact there with Justin Malone, but no flag. Tariq Thompson in coverage. And it's going to force the Wildcats into another punt. Jordan Bird will go back deep. For Wonderful Sandy job, Ursa. Ari, from Josh Davis. There. I know we talked about him not having any yards, but boy, sometimes you can get yourself going in pass pro. You did a wonderful job of picking up the blitz there. That was I your favorite that. part, right? You love loved pass I mean, pro. I think favorite is probably used a little loosely there, <laughs> but you got to be able to do it at the running back position. Impressive with Davis with his pass pro. I thought when Ray Lewis was blitzing, that's the only time you wanted to be in pass protection. <laughs> You close your eyes when you hit him. Close <laughs> just your eyes hope. And pray. Even if you whip him. Here, matter. check this out again. Watch Josh Davis, number 20. Getting that nose in there, putting that body in there. That's impressive. That is an impressive block. And he's a little guy. A small guy, not afraid to stick his nose in there. 5'9, 195. And, you know, they usually pad those a little bit. So I'm going to go 5'8, 188. <laughs> You're just going to take it off. <laughs> well, I just, I'm trying to give him more credit for stepping in there. So no score early in the second quarter. San Diego State hosting FCS opponent, Weber State from Utah. Agnew, play action all day to throw. Now he's going to scramble and just launch it over to the tight end, Parker Houston. Makes a catch right. That's the second Brett second Farr time, play yeah. that yeah. he's made already. I'm trying to make something out of nothing there. Able to be able to pick up a positive game. Here. But you have to wonder here too, Ari, with this new spread formation that the Aztecs have installed and that they're using, is there a ripcord here? Is there a time when, when Rocky Long says, you know what, we're just going to go back to the basics and get out of this spread again because it currently hasn't had the productivity. Now, it's still very early in this game. They can certainly get things going. This just looks like a different Aztec offense right now. And that's incomplete. Wouldn't have gained much any. Anyway, there were, really was, there were guys all over the place. It's, I believe it was Chance Bell who was the intended target, number 21. Uh... To answer your question, I don't see them going back to the pro style until sure. at least, like, mid-third quarter. And even then, I think if you made the commitment the whole offseason, can you really change it in week one? You're trying to win football games, yeah. so you certainly can. You certainly can. He knows how to coach out. that other system. That's <laughs> sure. He sure does. And it wouldn't be a surprise to a lot of folks, especially on on offense. Players know that system. And I know it's, it's, it's early, but, boy, Agnew. this feels like a different offense. Agnew trying to direct traffic. Now he's going to take off and run. And he's out of bounds, shy of the 40. And he's going to be shy of the first down at San Diego State. He'll be forced to punt again. Jonah Williams and Austin Tesh there to force Agnew out of bounds. And I think that's going to be the difference for the Aztecs and trying to figure out who's the guy that's going to spark them. It's going to have to be the quarterback. I think Ryan Agnew is going to have to make a play with his legs or something to breathe some life into this offense to get the rhythm going. Brandon Hecklin on the punt. Rashid Shahid waits deep. 
standing at his own 20. He's backing up all the way to the 11-yard line. And he gets to the sideline, out of bounds to the 22. All things considered, a pretty good job there on the return by Shahid. And we'll get another look at this Wildcat offense. In the meantime, let's, let's go to the third and cherished member of the broadcast team, Krista Balboni. Thank you so much for singing that, Ari. I appreciate that. I cherish you guys, too, up there in the booth. So, you know, this San Diego State Weaver State meeting is something that, you know, a lot of us have never seen in our lifetime. So this is the third time that these two schools have been, uh, have met. San Diego State has won the first two. Look at this, the last time that these two schools played, November 1967. So I went and did a little digging to see what was going on in 1967. Here's an idea of what we're looking at. So. Popular movies back in 67, The Graduates. Never seen it, by the way. Cool Hand Luke, have not seen that either. Although I know quotes from both, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, no free time. Respect by Aretha Franklin. Of course, we all know that one. That was one of the most popular songs of the year. And then also, I'm a Believer by the Monkees was big that year. And guys, in case you were wondering, gas was 33 cents a gallon. Wow. The first successful heart transplant was performed in 1967, and the first ATM machine was installed that same year. I believe it was at a bank in London. So that's quite a long time, guys, but I, I mean, I'm certainly glad that they're meeting again and that we get to be a part of it. That is incredible. I mean, in that year, my parents were 12 and 11 years old. Wow. <laughs> is that not incredible? It is crazy to think how long it's been. I'm really just still focused on the on the ATM thing. I mean, yeah, I mean we're, how was life without an ATM machine? Well, you, wait, that got changer. you over the heart transplant? <laughs> it did, actually, because I don't have a heart problem, but I do need to get cash from time to time. All right, there we see the series history, and it's been a minute. Aztecs have won the prior meetings. So far, no blood's been drawn. Now, Kristen... What's it like down there? I mean, are you feeling like a lot of energy, one one side more than the other? What's going on uh, at field no, level? No, not so much. I've been walking around roaming the sidelines, and, and really, especially on the San Diego State side, it's been a little, it's been a little uh, subdued, I would say. Well, we uh, were worried it was kind of a trap game because they've got UCLA next week. Like, would their minds be right against a very good FCS opponent? Mm -hmm. Weber State definitely has a little bit more energy on their sideline. Indigo State, during that last defensive stop, they got a little excited, but uh, it's been kind of dead down here, guys. Got it. Sometimes, Ari, it could be a defensive play, a big hit, or something that sparks the team. Somebody's got to step up here. One of the leaders got to step up on both sides. Kevin it Smith, the ball carrier there, he missed last year, had a very productive season in 2017. He's the guy who spells Josh Davis some. They like what Kevin Smith can do with the football in his hands. Shotgun run. Nice ISO to the right side. Going to get up to that second level and pick up a few yards. Look at that offensive line. You got to look at 71, Ben Bowes, number 71, that center. He's the guy who makes all the calls on the offensive line for the Wildcats. Nice job getting out in space and making a block. Looks like Jay Hill is going to take a little extra time. Yeah, Jay Hill needs to get that group together, get organized. 30 and seconds really in More on offense coordinator Dave Schramm because Jay Hill really, he's the head coach and the defensive coordinator. Maybe not in title, but certainly in practice. And Schramm runs the offense. This is a good question for Schramm here. We know that Caden Jinks is, is ready to go. He's healthy now. Again, he was the starter last year before the injury. So he's coming off that injury. He lost the starting job after the injury and wasn't able to get back into full health. And so he's healthy now, so you have to wonder here, Ari. Offense stagnant, quarterback hasn't been able to do much. Do you look down and go to your second guy in Caden Jinks, number 11 for the Wildcats? We'll keep monitoring that to see if maybe he gets an opportunity to play here early. Second down. And check it down to Kevin Smith, and Smith is close to a first down easy yard shot. First downs have been hard to come by for both teams. All right, Darius, take a look. Look at this. Winning Wildcats. Ten-plus win seasons the last two years. They advanced to the quarterfinals of the FCS playoffs the last two years. 21-6 and six during that span, and then finished the season ranked sixth in the nation. 
The team that played in the championship last year was Eastern Washington. They played an FCS championship last year. Weber State beat them in the regular season. So this is a really good football team that expects to come out and play well. Your level of preparation is off the charts. I mean, you know the Mount West in the big sky as well as anybody. Well done, Darius Walker. That's going to be short of the first down. And we've got a new quarterback, Kaden Jinks. Jinks coming in. We thought we'd see we both might quarterbacks. See him. Here we go. Well, it's fourth and really short. You can't go for it here at your own 30, even if you're on the road as an FCS team. Yeah, I mean, bring out the punting crew. This is not a hard <laughs> not decision. Not even uh, a Not even, come on. Not even punt the ball. Certainly no reason to give San Diego State that kind of momentum. And San Diego State's very good at blocking kicks. Like, just it could be a disaster. Just punt it away. <laughs> Safe bet, conventional <laughs> wisdom. I mean, it's week punt one. The football away. Save the trickery for late in the year. Look at this formation. And how they get up there. Rugby style kick. And it's Tariq Thompson returns it to the 30 yard line. Well, Larry, you mentioned a potential poll question on the punts. It's five on both sides now. We've Thank seen you. ten punts in this game so far. Tape, don't lie. Weekly on Facebook. Go deeper into the biggest college football games each week on Tape, don't lie. Stadium college football analyst Michael Felder goes into the film room with a rotating cast of football experts to take a deep dive on college football's most important players and teams. New episodes drop each week on Stadium's Facebook page. Stadium, welcome to the game. Now, I'd imagine that the rotating cast of football experts must include Kristen Balboni. <laughs> well, I haven't been asked yet, but it's only been about week one of Tape Don't Lie, so I'm hoping that Michael Felder will let me <laughs> come on the show. But it's absolutely excellent. Would highly recommend that to everyone. He is, he's, he's Darius' level of knowing his stuff. There's no doubt about it. I appreciate it. that. Um, so we have some pictures coming in on Instagram that we want to get to. Uh, like I said, I don't think that they can do any justice to Ari's uh, beautiful daughter, Layla, up there in the booth. But we got some adorable ones right here watching in Vegas using that hashtag. You see that first hashtag there? That is the one that you can use if you want to see yourself on this broadcast. So thank you so much for that adorable fan. Okay, now this is cute. So we're oh, getting babies. Good. I guess they saw your daughter, Ari, and wanted to send in the babies. These are absolutely adorable. And first, they have two. I mean, that tops my one. Did you I see the little Did you see the little football onesie? That was absolutely adorable. Drummer Mama's repping her Aztecs at Disneyland. I like that a lot. Oh, okay. Oh, wow, I that's like this. getting it in. Yeah, this multitasking. This is what I love here. So <laughs> this is a Weber State fan watching the game while doing laundry. And this is one of the greatest things, aside from seeing your pictures here on the game while your team is playing, you can take us anywhere, right? And comment and Instagram. That's certainly got to make the laundry go by a lot faster, I would think. <laughs> Brittany K125, she says, we still, we may live in Virginia, but we still bleed purple. I gotta say, we're seeing a lot of Weber State fans on the Instagram. So I felt like San Diego right. State was dominating the Facebook. Baby she's cheering on uncles, Jared and Douglas She's, You guys, those are the two brothers that play on the defensive line. I got, I got something for you about the two of them a little bit later. Yeah, Doug 99 and Jared 91. The third she's brother to play as well. That's right. All right, first Athletic and 10 family. for the Aztecs. And their offense has been uh, slow out of the gate here in week one. On the ground, and here's the first big play. And they go to Jordan Bird, brought down by Brody Burke. Jordan Burke, sophomore from Albuquerque. Little guy, 5'9", 170. Sometimes it takes any guy to get it done, but what an incredible job from the center and the right guard there. Ismail and Dixon, nice combo block to spring. How about the George. vision, too? That nice little bounce. He got narrow in a hurry, and it's Bird again, and he's giving them a spark. He's really being aggressive with how he's going after the attack there. Nice job with the stutter step and getting up field. You see his vision is a little bit taken up by Agnew there in that spread formation, but he's able to get out a couple of instinctive moves, and they're going to continue to feature him. All right, Bird this time stopped uh, maybe a gain of a few inches. 
on first half. And interesting that San Diego State elected to up the tempo to try to get their offense going. Well, I thought they'd it. keep doing it, and now they're going back, going back and taking it. their time. And I like it, too, because what, what happens is, is it stops guys from thinking. They're just reacting. Let's get up to the field. Forget about not playing well the last series or the last play. When you go fast, it just helps guys react. It can be a pretty good strategy and useful. Agnew, and he completes it. He's going to be shy of the first down. Catch made at the 35-yard line. Dado the catch, sophomore from Las Vegas. Eight starts a year ago, 22 catches for 262 yards. And he's really their most complete wide receiver on offense for the Aztecs in terms of his route running and ability. He knows how to get open. Third down, and they will not pick it up. A loss on the play. And the Wildcats get to Bird in a hurry. And this is an interesting spot on the field, Darius. It's fourth down at the 35. It would be fourth and three. They've got a brand-new kicker after having a four-year starter gone. Do you go for it here? I think you go for it. Okay. I think that's probably the best move. It feels like they have a little bit of momentum on offense. They've been able to run the football. Wouldn't be surprised if you take a timeout here, too. Maybe try to figure out a make sure you're in the right play. On our first fourth down attempt. Fourth and three. Agnew, the throw, complete. First down, Aztecs. As Buzz, oh, check that. That's Matthews with the catch. Jesse Matthews. Nice job by Matthews settling down here. He's to the right of your screen. Going to come down with an in route, run up five yards and come back in. Love how he uses those hands to be able to catch that football instead of letting the football get into his body. Sometimes that happens for wide receivers when there's a rifle pass. You let the football get into your body and it can bounce off your shoulder pads. Nice job by Matthews to get his hands out there with a solid catch. Matthews made the team as a walk-on. Agnew going up over the top. A little too much on the throw. Need a little more air under that one to give his guy a chance, Kobe Smith. To love to see this from the Aztecs now. Looks like they're taking a couple of chances here. Agnew has the time. A little bit of an overthrow there. Wonderful job in coverage that time. Maxwell Anderson. Second and ten. Blitz is coming. They look to run it. A oh, nifty move. And the Aztecs have another first down, as this time it's Chance Bell, the ball carrier. We're going to see Connor Mortson here, number 35. He's the one who's going to blitz and vacate his spot. Excellent job of recognizing where the blitz is coming from. Bell able to bounce it outside and go into the empty space to pick up the first down. Burke makes the tackle, sophomore from Salt Lake City. Good-looking drive here for the Aztecs. They converted the fourth down. Agnew looking to take it himself, and he'll get wrapped up after a gain of a couple. Maxwell Anderson making another play, number 21 there. But here deep in the red zone, it's been slightly surprising, Ari, that we haven't seen Washington with the football in his hand yet. We saw Bird and we saw Bell both eat up some yardage on the ground. Still no number 29 out on the field for the Aztecs. Blitz is coming. Agnew's in trouble, and he'll go down. Sacked back at the 25. All kinds of pressure, and there's really nothing he could do. Connor Mortensen's deep in the backfield there, number 35, number 48, McCabe Mitten. He also gets into the backfield. But you see the, you'll see both Mike, both linebackers blitz here. That means there's too many guys for the offensive line to be able to take. There's one extra guy. The Wildcats able to get two to Agnew and bring him down. Now third and long, and again, they have a brand new place kicker. I'll be curious to see what they decide to do. Matt Ariza will be the new kicker, but I wonder whether or not this everything is in four down territory. They're going to keep it on the ground. And Chance Bell gets it to the 17 yard line. It's going to make it a much easier field goal attempt. He's also in the middle of the field, which helps. Smart play, trying to play for the points here. And Ariza, redshirt freshman from right here in San Diego, went to Rancho Bernardo High School. 
John Barron was the four-year starter, two-time Luke Rose is semifinalist. 35-yard field goal attempt, the first of his career for Ariza. Good snap, good hold, kick is on the way. I don't think that's possible. And I think in, in today's climate, um, the way the Heisman voters look at it, you have to play on a really, really good team, a playoff caliber team. And I think Trevor Lawrence is the guy. But hey, I was here last month talking to you in late October, and I said, two is a lock, two is a lock. <laughs> That's right. I always say it's you never um, award a Heisman Trophy this early, but this guy's a lock. And sure enough, Kyler Murray came came on strong at the end. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. Yeah, yeah. Some pressure on Jalen Hurts there to continue oh, yeah. that run of Oklahoma quarterbacks, a not only winning the Heisman, but also becoming the number one overall pick. Mm -hmm. I think that streak ends this year, but. Look, it we'll, will. we'll see. It will, yeah. Yeah, well, I don't know. You were so sure about that last that's year. That's true, that's true. <laughs> All right, so as far as the teams going into the college football playoff, who are the four teams? I have to go with, uh, no surprise, I'm going heavy chalk, Clemson, Alabama, Georgia. All three teams, again, big favorites all through the regular season. Mm. My fourth team, I, I could have gone with Oklahoma. I, I considered Michigan. I'm going with Utah. Wow. I really like Ooh, Utah. Utah. I think. That's wow. Yeah. Now, they, as long as they didn't lose to BYU Saturday in right. Provo, I like Utah. <laughs> Zach Moss is back at running back, one of the best running backs in the country. Um, they're, they're set at quarterback. I think the biggest thing for me is they have six players with starting experience on the defensive line, and Kyle Whittingham wants a more physical approach this year with new mm -hmm. offensive coordinator. Andy Ludwig and so I really like Utah it's funny to say this is a surprise team when they're the pick to win the Pac-12 right. but that's kind of where the Pac-12 is right now mm -hmm. but um yeah I'm, I'm gonna go with the Utes I like wow. it wow yeah that's surprising that's bit, yeah. Pac-12 yeah, surprising like that. outside the box yeah Clemson is the heavy favorite to win the college football playoff championship title however who do you have winning the title this 2019 season History says don't pick Clemson because the num preseason number one team has not won the national title in 13 of the last 15 years. But I'm going against history. I think Clemson, <laughs> I think Clemson repeats. Sounds like the right yeah, choice yeah. to me. Uh, Look, it's hard to go against right, the Right, it, it yeah, is. I mean, is. Trevor Lawrence, Travis Etienne, um, they're loaded at wide receiver. And I remember Dabo Sweeney last year after winning the national title in Santa Clara, he sat there and people were like, what are you going to do next year? You lose all this defensive talent. And he said, we have a lot of guys right now that you don't know who they are. Yeah. But this time next year, you're going to know who they are. Mm. I think he knows what he's got coming back. He's confident. Um, again, they play Texas A&M and Syracuse consecutive weeks. That's really the only challenge they're going to see. It's ultimately going to come down to the playoff. And I, I like the Tigers to repeat. Over... Would you say, I mean, that's, we don't would, know exactly the matchup. Yeah, the I, would go, I, I think Georgia somehow is going to get to the Ooh. title game. Mm. I, 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 they will either get to the title game or they will win the SEC, and they may lose to Alabama in the semifinals. But I, I, I like Georgia on the other side. Wow. All right. Clemson, Georgia. All right. Southern Flair. Once again, we'll play <laughs> Surprise, the, yeah. the Southeast. Great getting that insight from our insider, Brett McMurphy. We are here at the half San Diego State leads Weber State three to nothing in a defensive battle in the first half. Hey everybody, I'm Kristen Valboni. Well, in addition to getting to do cool stuff like roam the sidelines for stadium, I also got a chance a few weeks ago to sit down with some incredible female athletes to talk about their journeys and also how they are helping to pave the way for young women. It is called Stadium's Change in Play. Check it out. <laughs>
Balboni here with my stadium co-host Amina Smith and we are so excited because we have three powerhouse athletes who are blazing trails in their respective sports. We've got Shanae Ogumake, Paige Van Sant, and Rachel Adams. Yes, we're here with three ladies who are at the top of their games in their sports to discuss their journeys in their respective sports and also the challenges facing women and girls in sports today. And we are so excited to have you here. Thank you so much for taking the time. And so I want to start this conversation by reading this stat, something that shocked me um, when I saw this. By the age of 14, girls are dropping out of sports at twice the rate of boys. And we know just how important it is on and off the field. So Shanae, I would love to start with you. Can you imagine what your life would be like if you hadn't stuck with basketball? I really can't imagine what my life would be like without basketball because, you know, growing up, I was that tall, lanky, you know, like the middle school picture. You probably were like, you, you were pretty good at it. I was like sticking out like a sore thumb. And so, you know, it's funny growing up, it's so tough. So I can understand around 14, you're sort of fed up with being the one person that's different or strange. Um, and a lot of times we think those things that make us different are our weaknesses, but instead they actually turn out to be your strength. Because around 14, that's when I started falling in love with the game of basketball. And then being the tallest one, the lankiest one meant I could get rebounds, I could run the floor, and I could finish better than girls my age. So just having that confidence to stick with it really helped me because, I mean, without basketball, I don't know. They always say like, put your height to good use. And it really, <laughs> it really ends up working out for me. No one's ever told me to put yeah, my sorry, height to good use. That is for sure. <laughs> Paige, what about you? When I was 15, I found MMA and it 100% saved my life. I didn't actively search out to be a professional fighter. It found me and I just it lit a passion under me and it, it's where I am today. It's created my entire career and I feel like it is my purpose. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Rachel, I'm sure you stuck out like a sore thumb like Shanae oh, in yeah. middle school I was relating well. to her. It's like, I was tall, I was lanky, and then I remember when I got to college and all the girls were so similar to me. And if I felt like normal, I'm like, whoa, like, you know, the, I'm around these other strong, strong women. And I felt like so confident and I felt like I belonged. And through all the struggles and everything, I felt like I found like my worth ethic and my strength. And I went through a lot of trials and struggles and, you know, without it, you know, it sets me up for like the world after, like in the workplace and everything. But without sports, like, yeah, I don't know where I would be with just who I am as a person that I'm proud to be. Welcome back. Halftime at San Diego State. A low scoring affair in the opener. It's three to nothing Aztecs. Hello to everyone. I have a very special guest, John David Wicker, the athletic director at San Diego State. And let's begin the new stadium. Tell us the details, when it's going to open, and, and the excitement for the program. We're obviously really excited about building a 35,000 capacity stadium. And we're in the process of designing it right now and working on selling the or buying the property from the city of San Diego. And if all goes well, we'll put a shovel in the ground next March or April and we will open on September 3rd, 2022 against the University of Arizona. Wow, that would be a pretty cool to play Arizona in the opening game there. So for the fans, what are some of the things that they can look forward to in the new stadium? Uh, the biggest, it's, it's going to be very intimate. There's going to be, a, it's, it'll be very experiential. We're really looking food, everything on the concourse, bringing the fans closer to the game. We'll have a lot of different areas of premium uh, that welcome any fan. You know, no matter who you are, you'll be able to find something for you in the stadium. And it's going to be something that we're going to use 365 days a year as well. It's for soccer, it's for dirt shows, it's for concerts, it's for whatever. Well, I would think for this football program that's had a lot of success, if there is sort of a next level for them to achieve, Having a smaller stadium that can really get the fans and the students engaged, I'd imagine it's going to give you a huge home field advantage. Yeah, it, it'll be awesome. I mean, you look at the crowd here tonight, and it doesn't look, it looks like hardly anybody's here because we're playing at a 70,000-seat stadium. But you put this crowd in the new stadium, and it's basically full, and it's going to create the first true home field advantage for our football team. And that's meaningful in recruiting. Recruits will see that, and the student athletes obviously will respond to it on the field. And I would think other sports will be affected by it as well because it's just going to give a buzz 
goes to this athletic department. So if you're coming down being recruited for basketball, soccer, volleyball, and you see this brand new football stadium, that's got to help recruiting in all sports. Absolutely. And, you know, the great thing is we'll, we want to play soccer here. We want to play lacrosse here. So our soccer and lacrosse teams will have the opportunity to play here as well. So that's a big recruiting boost for them. And obviously it's a great revenue generator for the um, for the department. So it's going to benefit every, every single student athlete. Uh, within the department. So we're really excited. And it'll be great for our fans more than anything. Uh, we're really excited for you. John David Wicker, thank you so much for joining us. Appreciate right. you stopping by. And we're going to take a look at a season preview of San Diego State football. Last year, senior Ryan Agnew went 6-1 and one as a starter and is back to lead San Diego State to hopefully another bowl-eligible season. The Aztecs also return a strong running game and sharp defense and hope to get back on track to record their fourth 10-win season in five years. Tamara Brown in the Mountain West Network studio counting down to kickoff with the San Diego State Aztecs. The X's and O's of the offense lead the headlines for the Aztecs as they make the switch from running I formation to a spread offense. Head coach Rocky Long believes this new system will make it easier for its senior quarterback to succeed. With a lot more of a shotgun offense, the Aztecs are anticipating putting up more points per game this season. Once you go to a spread formation, defenses have to spread out too. So obviously your quarterback's in the shotgun, he's more comfortable, and your offensive linemen are able to pick out who they block much, much easier, so their execution should be better. So we're not changing our philosophy. We're still going to run the ball as much. We want to run first, play action pass after that. If we get in a long yardage situation, we're already in a spread formation anyway, so it maybe lends our quarterback a little freedom that he didn't have in the past, but mostly it's to give our offensive linemen a chance to perform better. If anything, it probably create more opportunity for us, you know, just to see things a little bit different. And, um, you know, it might be a little quicker than being eight yards deep in the backfield, having to wait on uh, the quarterback to meet you halfway in the backfield. You know, the quarterback's moving out the way just to um, hold the ball out, and you, and you get in, you go, and you'll be able to see the hole before you even get the ball and be able to read it for you. It was Donnell Pumphrey, then Rashad Penny, and now it's Jawan Washington who's continuing San Diego State's remarkable stretch of explosive running backs. Washington, who had 999 yards and 10 touchdowns, is the offensive player to watch for the Aztecs. You can always get better, whether you rest for a 2,000 one year or 1,000, you can always get better from the previous year before that. And, and just being able to miss those games and being able to learn for the, the time I was out, I was able to see a, a lot of different things. It just kind of reminded me of when I was younger and was able to watch Rashad and DJ run the ball a little bit. So I was in there watching those young guys and, and I was able to help them out a little bit, see some things different than they didn't get to see when they were in there on the field. And I was able to help them as they came off. So it just kind of helped me grow. He's got great vision like all good running backs do. But he's, he's big enough and strong enough and powerful enough in his legs, he breaks a lot of arm tackles. And then he's got good enough quickness to make you miss. And he's got pretty good top end speed, though if he gets out in the open, it's going to be hard to catch him. On the other side of the ball, first team All Mountain West honoree Kiava Tazino is the player to watch. In 2018, the middle linebacker racked up 127 tackles, 14 and a half tackles for loss, and eight and a half sacks. The senior has his eyes on another successful season at San Diego State. I think I just really focused a lot. It really took a lot of mental focus for me. Um, it really took like a lot of prayer and stuff because uh, just a couple years I wasn't even playing. You know, for me to pop up on the scene just this past year was a real big deal for me. And for me to f continue to do that and probably to do the same from last season, it's just a little extra work. Now, now I got uh, expectations on my back and I have to uphold to those expectations. And, and I mean. I'm willing to do it. Well, it's, it's hard to uh, try to change some things, but we're trying to change some things so that he stays in the middle of the formation or the middle of the defense. Uh, because most linebackers have to adjust to formations and stuff. We're trying to make our defensive back to, backs adjust to the formation and allow him to stay in the middle of the field. This feature has been brought to you by Mountain America Credit Union, the official credit union of the Mountain West. From the Mountain West Network Studio, I'm Tamara Brown. Three to nothing, our score at the half. And back up in the broadcast booth, I'm here with my better half, Ari Wolf, alongside <laughs> Darius Walker. And Darius, what'd you learn in the first half? Well, I think we both realized that this was going to be a good defensive matchup. 
two teams that predicate themselves on being able to play defense. We saw that here today. But a couple of surprises for me. One on the offense for the Wildcats is Constantine. He's only got 12 yards passing right now in the first half. So we saw Jinx a little bit in that second quarter. I think we may see a package for Jake, for Caden Jinx to be able to come in and start for quarterback for the Wildcats. And on the other side, for the Aztecs, it is all Washington, or should I say the lack thereof. He's got five yards rushing, which is unheard of for him in terms of productivity. So it's going to be interesting to see Rocky Long and his staff get back to the basics. Can they get back to basics? Will they get back to the basics? Hand the football off to number 29. And also, Jordan Bird showed some flashes of brilliance Absolutely. at the running back position. He's not a big guy, but showed some elusiveness, and on their only scoring drive, he kind of gave that offense some juice. Well, the beautiful thing that you can do when you have a guy like Juwan Washington, you can use him as a decoy. Sure. Put him out there, fake it to him, allow Jordan Bird or someone else to be able to make some plays. That's a good move. All right, let's take a look at stats from the first half. And you see the numbers here. I mean, very low on both sides in terms of that offense. 61 rushing yards for the Aztecs. That's just something you never see from them in terms of the first half. And then the first down, the third downs, in terms of third down conversions, the Aztecs have yet to do it. They are 0 for 8. So I can guarantee you that Rocky Long gave his offense an earful in at halftime and is expecting better results here. You think he can go with tough love week one? <laughs> oh, <laughs> lots of tough love. Okay. Strong kickoff, no chance at a return, so we'll get a look. Again at the Weaver State offense, not a lot of offense. Jay Constantine in the first half. 10 for 12, 63 yards. Now it's not the crazy thing about being a quarterback, and this is sort of an old saying, is, is they get too much credit, too much of the credit, and too much of the blame. Yes, offensively, they did not play well in the first half, and a lot of it was on Constantine, but he hasn't gotten much help from the weapons around him. Josh Davis hasn't been able to really get loose. Rashid Shahid, he had the good kick return, or the punt return, but we haven't seen him get loose on offense either. So the weapons around Constantine have got to step up to help their quarterback. And the give is to Davis, and Davis is going to be tackled for a loss. Boy, that swarming Aztec defense all over it. That's the thing that you love about the Aztecs is they play team defense. All you see is a bunch of black jerseys in there making plays. Davis looks for one hole, can't, can't get in, needs to go outside. The further he goes outside, the more the cavalry comes. Good job, Troy Cassidy, finishing him off there with the tackle. And this is where you want to keep the Wildcats if you're the Aztecs turn defense. Keep them in second and long situations where they cannot feature their running back. Have them force Constantine to have to beat them with his arm. They move Justin Malone to the other side. Three receivers up top. And they check it down to Davis. And Aztecs are not fooled. Caden McDonald, 54 there to make the play. And I'll tell you this, the Rocky Long defense looks in midseason form. They have not been fooled by a lot of misdirection, different formations. They seem to know exactly where they want to be. Well, the recipe for success has always been keep everything in front of you. That's the point of the 3-3-5 three, three, is to keep all the stuff in front of you so you don't get beat deep. But what that means is you got to come up and make some tackles. And McDonald has been able to do it. Tenzino has been able to do it. We've seen Troy Cassidy get in there and make tackles in space. This is excellent defense. Textbook Rocky Long. Constantine trying to set it up to the running back, and he does to Kevin Smith. Smith spins and will go down at the 30. And fourth down coming up, and Wildcats will have to punt. Well, I love the play call in terms of the screen here, and not to take anything away from Kevin Smith, but they haven't done this with Josh Davis yet. They haven't given him an opportunity to be able to make a couple of guys miss out in space with a screen play. Nice job by the Aztecs, again, of keeping everything in front of them and making sure that they make a short tackle short of the first down. Bird waits deep at his own 29-yard line. Essex just brought another player onto the field. They only had 10 out there. Lloyd's punt. Good directional punt. And Bird's going to come up from his own 23. And he will go down at the 26. So let's see what the Aztecs figured out offensively at the half. His first half offensively was not the half that they're going to remember fondly. Total yards, 133 yards, 72 through the air, 61 on the ground. There's a number for numbers, pardon me, for Ryan Agnew, 11 of 18 for 72 yards. 
And they've actually done a pretty good job, at least the offensive line has, of giving Agnew the time. Yeah. He's had the time. He just hasn't been able to find open wide receivers. So some of that is on him and being able to deliver an accurate pass. It's also on the wide receivers are creating space in one-on-one -on -one situations. Big carry for the Aztecs as Washington shows he's healthy. Rocky Long wasn't sure whether he'd be good to go in the second half, but a strong carry to get things going for the Aztec offense. 18 yards. Doesn't look like that ankle is having any kind of problem, but an excellent job from the fullback coming in there. 34, Isaac Lassari, the one who makes the block that springs Washington to the inside up to the second level. Big pickup for 29. Gain of a yard there, and we also saw there a bad angle on that first down play taken by the safety, Preston Smith. Not saying he would have made the tackle, but he didn't give himself a chance are fundamentals in terms of the angle and approach that you take as a defender trying to get down a guy especially a guy like Jawan Washington who has the shakes and the ability to be able to make you miss second and nine it's more Washington he's got to run in between the tackles get into Weber State territory tackled at the 49 yard line set it, setting up a manageable third and four David Jones with the tackle and this is the wrinkle that the spread offers for, for runners, especially Washington in this case. He's having to look at the defense a little bit differently now. Out of the spread formation with the, with the quarterback in front of him, it's a little bit of a different angle that he's trying to find as the runner in the backfield. So he's got to get adjusted to that from the spread formation as well. Agnew. Design rollout, throws across his body complete for an Aztec first down. Gets to the 44-yard line as Cody makes the catch. This is Cody's specialty, settling down on his own and just finding a window. Pitch and catch here. Agnew directing traffic on the run. Nice job by Cody finding a little lane to settle down in. Pick up the first down. And to me, that's the recipe of success for the Aztecs on offense. They got to get Agnew moving around. Agnew's going to keep it. A little run pass option. And good decision by Agnew as he's out of bounds at the 37-yard line. He's complaining a little bit there about the what he thought was a late hit. And Mittens a little bounds. shaken up. Look at the end of this play here, Ari. Nice job reading that defensive end from Agnew, trying to get to the outside. That is late. Frankly, he was well out of bounds. Late. That's late. That's a quarterback, too. It'd feel differently if it was a running back. Well, I don't know that I appreciate that. I know you yeah. don't, but you got to keep the quarterback healthy. Washington. And gonna bring up a third and three for the Aztecs, and they've got a good drive going here. First drive of the third quarter. And this offensive line seems to really be playing better in this first series, especially in comparison to what they were doing in the first half. And they, hey, Ismael, and they have the a huge size advantage they, up they front. They really do. When you look at Jacob Kapari, number 77, 315 pounds. He's that right tackle transfer from the University of Oregon as a graduate transfer. They're looking for him to step up and really be an anchor on that line. Washington falls forward, but he's a little bit short of it. I got to think this is four down territory. And when they were in the pro style, I wouldn't have even like brought it up for debate. <laughs> yeah. They'd be running it. He'd be good to go. Good job, Washington trying to get up here. Good job there defensively to bring him down. Shy, so fourth and less than a yard. Let's see if they get Agnew under center here. And he'll be in the pistol. Now, if they hand this to Washington, just think about the vision that he has. He's got to get around the quarterback. Washington looked like he was going to have it, then doesn't have it, and then falls forward, and I don't think he got it. Maybe that second he effort. He had to get to the 34. He never got to the 34. The second effort. We'll have to see what the spot is. But this is where the problems in the spread that the spread will create. We've got a running back who's seven yards deep having to go around the quarterback to try to pick up a yard. You almost wonder if that's a situation where you can go under center and snap the football with a QB snap, a QB sneak of some sort, but not the best play call in terms of designing to be able to pick up short yardage. 
Well, let's go down to Kristen. Kristen, what you got for us? Well, we've got another poll. Ari mentioned earlier in the first half that he wanted to do a poll about how many punts we're going to be in this game. We changed it just a little bit. We want to know from everyone at home, what do you think is going to happen next? Really, that's the thing. So you can vote on scoring play, turnover, or punt. Um, I think I know which way Ari might be voting <laughs> in this one. Um, so go ahead and get those votes in. That is our next poll. I mean, punting has been the name of the game, but... I don't know, maybe we can start to see some uh, some offense here in the second half. So go ahead and get those in. And remember also, use the hashtag on Instagram, WSUVSSDSU. I'm told we got some good pictures rolling in. So we're gonna show those a little bit later. Hey, Kristen, for those of people scoring at home, there have been 13 punts in the game 13. and three points scored. <laughs> <laughs> just, just to help just everybody out there. Just an FYI in terms yeah. of where the numbers are currently. Yeah. Hunts are winning right now. Hunts are winning. The, and look, I've been I've been to this stadium many times. There's actually a very good crowd here. It's just a stadium that seats 70,000 people. So sometimes I think on television or streaming, it doesn't look as big a crowd as it is. But there's probably 40,000 40, people here. What do you think? Yeah, there's a, there's, a, there's a good sized crowd here. We got the show, as always, at every San Diego State game. They are loud. And guys, I've seen the wave go by at least three times. And it's a it's a solid wave, too, I would like <laughs> to say. You don't see that a lot at a lot of sporting events. It usually dies out. But uh, but they do a really good job of it here. So, Ari, you are definitely right about that. Here are our poll results right now. Uh, Pun still leading. <laughs> <laughs> turnover, yes. turnover and scoring play uh, a little bit further behind. People are hoping for a scoring play, though. 34%. We'll see what happens. Thank you, Kristen. First and 10 for Weber State from their own 35-yard line. Nice job by their defense coming up with a stop. We haven't seen the Wildcats get vertical yet in terms of trying to push the ball downfield. Not much doing on the running play there for Kevin Smith. The only time we saw him was they threw it down the field to Devin Cooley, who went up and made a nice catch. That's their only throw that's been more than 10 yards in the air. So, and they haven't given Cooley any other opportunities no. since then. So second down in this area of the field is a wonderful time to take a shot. You're looking for Cooley. He's number three. Let's see exactly which direction he comes in. He goes out of the huddle. It's going to be down at the bottom of the screen, flanked out. Pressure is coming. Constantine off his back foot, throws, and that's a risky throw. Looking for Shahid, and the pressure really affected it. Thompson in coverage for the Aztecs. You have to wonder in these situations, too, with Constantine, you're just trying to live to fight again live to fight another day you don't want to put yourself in a tough situation throwing off your back foot behind a wide receiver the wildcats are lucky that wasn't a turnover the third down situation here i think you have to try to figure out a way to go back to devin cooley number three again he's at the bottom of the screen with justin malone the tight end which means he's got a one-on-one -on -one matchup on the outside third down play clock running down They get it off. Pressure coming. Constantine delivers in traffic. Caught. First down, Weber State. Justin Malone, the catch. What a wonderful catch that was. He had Trenton Thompson all over him. He's going to come across the field, 88. Nice job keeping those eyes upfield by Constantine. That's a pretty good delivers throw. Delivers a strike on the yeah. move. Feeling that pressure and putting it there, that is a heck, that, that's the best throw of the night for Constantine. Malone lays out, picks up the first down. And Malone's gotten bigger. He's not like, you're, you're used to FBS tight ends being like at least 250. Right. He's 230. They said he's done a really nice job of getting stronger, putting on some weight. And that size is a benefit, especially on the outside with route running. It's Davis, and he is put to the ground after a gain of a yard. It has been really tough sledding running the football for Weber State. They have a total of 25 rush yards in the game. 
Troy Cassidy them, in on the stop. Sorry for them that, especially, Dave. it's it's just surprising because when you talk to Dave Scram, he talks about how much they lean on the run and how important it is to what they do offensively. So when you're not productive there, it really puts a strain on everything else that you're trying to do. No extra pressure. They roll out Constantine, throws downfield. Almost an interception. Looking for Cooley and Thompson. Great job in coverage. And he's really showing why he's on the Jim Thorpe watch list. It's the ball skills at the end of this play. He almost comes up with an interception here. He's coming down from the safety position and just going to cut off the route. Smart heads up play, reading the eyes of the quarterback. How about the vertical there? I mean, he got up there for nice that. Nice hops, for sure. Thompson showing you why he's one of the best defensive players in all of the Mountain West. Third and long. Will Rocky Long bring extra guys? Just four are coming. Plenty of time, and that's a low throw. Is the catch made? Yes, it is. But I think he's just shy of the first down. It's going to depend on the spot. It's close as Ames makes a difficult catch. Yeah, this is a, a mistake from Ames here. Whenever the route, whatever the route calls for, if it's third down, you got to get past the sticks. He gets past the sticks but takes a couple of steps oh, back. Oh, actually, hold on. That's not a catch. That's not see, a catch. Let's see if he actually caught this. It looks like that ball might have hit the ground. Hard to see Hard from to this see angle that here. Angle, but that, they got to take another look Ames at that. has to run past the sticks and make sure that when he catches that football, it's a first down. He's got to go one or two yards further. Puts them in a tough position here. As they're going to measure. They're, they're saying it's fourth down for the moment, but they're going to measure. I, I think they got to look at whether it was a catch. Yeah, he's definitely short. I mean, it's four down territory. If you're, I think if you're Weber State, you're trying for the upset on the road against an FBS opponent. You got to go for it. You definitely don't but have much to lose. You're still in this game. It's still only a one possession game. Somebody like upstairs should be looking at whether or not that was catch. We'll see if we can't take another look at it here as well. Maybe there's a better angle. Yeah, this would be great to see. Does Ames get his hands underneath the football? See, I thought he trapped it and then regrouped it right around his stomach. Really hard to see from the two angles that we have. Let's see here. See it's how he then tell. went to re-grab it? I don't know if there's conclusive evidence to overturn it, and they're going to let it stand. That's so a tough one there. Fourth and right. short. Fourth and inches. A little trickery. Ames is going to throw it up. It's a wounded duck, and it's incomplete. Oh, goodness. They would have had a touchdown there. And Ames looked like he was trying to throw it as far as he could. It just didn't come out right. And I'm not sure why he was, wasn't was going for Devin Cooley there, number three, because Devin Cooley was streaking down the middle of the field. I mean, the play the was there. That's like, your fourth and in inches play. The ball looked like it's going to Rashid Shahid, or he's trying right, to get it to Watch the way Shahid. this ball comes out of his hand. It's like, that's not a good-looking throw. I think that's his one and only pass attempt of the 2019 season. And he does have the gloves on. It's much harder to throw with gloves on. But the but play is there. The but you see the launch Cooley. angle on the throw? I mean. You see Cooley there. He's wide uh, open in the middle of the field there. You gotta He's got to lob throw. that football up. You do need to make that throw. I mean, the play was there. Gutsy call. Gutsy call. I mean, they could have been heroes. They should be up 7-3. to three. I feel like I'm beating up on David Ames, but I mean the play was there. You got to get a receiver who can make the throw. Yeah, the problem is he's probably made that throw a hundred times in practice and doesn't work out today. But Kristen, what you got for us? Well, guys, I guess we do know the answer to the last poll question. After all, I got a little trivia for you guys. Now I don't know if you two up in the booth peeked at this in my notes, so. Don't say it if you looked and cheated. This is the trivia question. We know Rocky Long has uh, just had an incredible run with San Diego State. He's gotten his team to a bowl game in each of his first eight seasons as head coach. There are only six active coaches who have done that in their first eight seasons. Rocky Long is uh, one of them. All right, who I, I, are the well, other I mean, five? I got a couple of obvious ones. Yeah, well, I so mean, wait, for, for so me. Wait, uh, 
Right. Honor, though. You did not look at what I said. I didn't look. Like. No, no, no. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. I haven't looked either. All right. Yeah, I, all right. So I then go ahead. I know emphatically that Brian Kelly's got to be on there. Am I on Yes, he is. I, Unfortunately, I he is on there. On there. Mr. Notre Dame got that one right. Mr. Notre Dame. And I'm guessing Nick Saban. Yeah, that's pretty easy. Gabo Sweeney from Clemson. I think probably two easy ones. All right. And after that, I'm done. I got nothing else. You got And you said how many? We've got six. You've got two more left. Two more left. Paul Chris hasn't been at Wisconsin long enough for him to be on there. Um, another another interesting, I'll give you a little hint, and everyone at home, um, one of the other coaches is coaching in the same state right now as San Diego State, if that helps you out at all. Yeah, no? Okay, that does help. For me. Yeah, I was just going to say, that helps. Yeah, you say same state, yeah, yeah, you know, that, 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 that definitely helps. <laughs> We'll save we'll go, it. All right. Yeah, we'll let we'll people guess it. out there. We'll see if anyone uh, gets it in the comments. The other Let's two. just say it's a real strong academic school. <laughs> yeah, that's a good way to think about it. <laughs> if your kid's going there, you're real happy about it. First and ten Aztecs. Washington. And he'll go down right at the line of scrimmage. You know, what really works. That Jonah Williams is a baller. And he's all over the field, too. You see 94 ranking in and making big plays. Clowney there, number 50, that defensive tackle. He makes havoc on the inside, too. One of the things we saw in the second quarter that works for the Aztecs was up-tempo, increasing the tempo. They haven't done that here in the second half yet. By the way, Curtis got that out, out in our social media, and he was all over it. He had David Shaw. So David, Good work, Curtis. Way to, yeah, way to go. Nice job, Curtis. David Shaw has done a really, he has done a really good job. Yeah, David Shaw, and he's very good on TV. Oh, NFL he's great Network analyst, uses yeah. him on the draft. Sure the day does. he's done coaching, he will have people <laughs> throwing him. Literally, they'll be bringing a Brinks truck to his please, house. Please, sir, please come to us, please. Third and long. One extra guy coming, Agnew all day. Now he's going to buy some time. He's got to be smart with it here, and he will just toss it into his own bench. It's so tough when the defense only rushes four. You have so many defenders in space out in the secondary there. But, boy, I mean, I have to tell you, and I think we've said this before, I know Rocky Long said that introducing the spread and adding those formations wasn't going to change what they do on offense, but, boy, it feels like it has. It just feels like the style of running, the, the, the play calling that they've had, it has changed drama okay, dramatically. Well, it from has last to year. because if you've got wide receivers on the outside, then you don't have two and three tight end sets where you're just absolutely running it down people's throat. Well, they can, you can move your wide receivers in and try to right. allow you're them not, to block. Oh, it. look at this play. Great special team play by the Aztecs. That was well executed, and it's going to force Weaver State to start out close to their own goal line. Nice job there by Woods. Tiptoe there, showing a little ballerina skills. Take another look at this. He's going to let it drop. Really should have caught that ball if you're Davis. Nice job by Woods there. Seeing where he is on the field, that good body control. Throws that football back. Now, how often do you do, did you return punts in your career? Not much. Yeah. It's a scary You're position. You're too valuable. It's just, no, well, not that I was too valuable. I probably was too afraid <laughs> to do it. It <laughs> okay. is quite a scary job. Well, because you said you wanted punts. him to catch it, and I thought the rule was never catch a punt inside your own tent. He was so close to it, he yeah. needed to catch it. Because okay. it could have hit him was the, is the problem. Right. Okay, like that was your issue. If the ball can hit you, yeah. you Get need out to try to catch it. Yeah. Chris Jenkins, the ball carrier, and they bring in the bigger back as they're backed up, and he gets it out to the eight. As Jackson's 5'10", 235, redshirt freshman out of Mesa, Arizona. He's really good in pass pro as well. Uh, we saw Josh Davis with a good pass pro pickup earlier in the game. Chris Jackson's the guy who does it most of the time. Second and four. Again, they go to the big back, and he tries to cut it back, and he gets across the 10-yard line. He's just shy of the 11-yard line. So spread up third and short, and this feels like a huge play, Darius, because if San Diego State could get a stop here, field they should position. get great field position. Yeah, they get field, good field position, and they've been playing a little bit better on offense. But I like what the Wildcats are trying to do here. They're a physical up front. They're a physical team. Ben Bose, number 71, is an all-conference center. They've got Xavier Stinson. 
at the right tackle position. He's played a lot for them. He's a massive man at 6'7", six, seven, six, seven, 300. So you got these big body up front. Lean on these guys and put the bigger back in and try to run power at the Aztecs. Well, they run it again with Jackson. Instead, it's Shahid, and Shahid has the first down. Oh, I like that play call. You this expected works, a power run. Right. That's why this works, because the power run was effective the past two plays. So you can mix it up and keep the defense off balance. A critical nice first down, call. yeah. Shahid's going to come in motion here. Constantine just tosses that little ball and up. And they there. made that execution look very easy. That's that, you know, ball handling is so critical. That yeah. was well executed. It can be challenging for sure. Flag before the play. False start. Number 88. Offense. Five yard penalty. Still first down. Now look at this false start here. There on the edge, that offensive line. Justin Malone, the guilty party. Jackson gets it close to the original line of scrimmage. The second, a little more than 10 yards. And frankly, if you're Weber State, if you're within a score late in the fourth quarter and you give yourself a chance to win, that, <laughs> that's all you chance, can hope yeah. for, right? You certainly do. And this game hasn't gone, at least offensively, for both sides the way that they would hope. But the Wildcats are still in this. I still want to see them with a deep pass play. Take a shot at the quarterback. They complete it, and Malone is upended. Tizino and company make the play, along with Tariq Thompson. Malone really needs to protect himself here on this. You hate to see players do this where they just give their legs up. He's got those shoulder pads on. Get that body weight down and take on Thompson. Instead of allowing him to go into your legs. You've got pads on, too. Take the heat to him. Crowd getting into it here in San Diego. Third and long. It appears the Aztecs are gonna bring some extra guys. They just get it off. They set up the screen. It's incomplete, and frankly, they did that to themselves. They were not ready to get the playoff. They weren't, and you have to think that in those moments, sometimes if Constantine had the ability to be able to call a timeout when it doesn't feel right, you know, instead of making some some last minute adjustments that may not work in that case, they had to move the back to the other side of the formation to try to run the screen that way. It's just a lot of moving pieces and not a smart play, especially on such a critical moment of third down. The Australian Doug Lloyd on the punt. And this time he will go the Aussie style. It's the lefty's boot. Jordan Bird from his own 40. And Bird gets up to the 48 yard line. Nice return. All right, let's go to our fan moment, and this is pretty cool. It's the 1969 San Diego State Aztec team was recognized at the half. They finished 11-0. Conference champs, they won the Pasadena Bowl over Boston University. So pretty cool. Guys who helped build the program, getting some recognition. I always love to see the guys showing some love. I like it. That guy's filming all. himself. A little selfie action. We had Layla up here earlier. She got a little selfie action. Yeah, got to get, when you get the baby's selfie yeah. action, it's pretty nice. <laughs> pretty, pretty good time. I mean, I've never been to San Diego and not had a good time. That's true. Kristen. Hey, Ari. What's going on? Well, I have been combing Facebook as well as my producer, John, and it doesn't look like anyone got the six trivia uh, answer right. Uh, you guys got a bunch. So just to remind everybody, this was the question we asked in the last break. Um, who besides Rocky Long have gotten their teams to bowl games as a head coach in the first 
eight seasons with the team. So you guys got Brian Kelly, Nick Saban, Devo Sweeney. Uh, David Shaw was also in the Facebook Curtis. comments, but from Curtis, Curtis, thank you very much. And the last one was Mark D'Antonio at Michigan State. Now, we ah. didn't see it in the Facebook comments, but let that us know Mark. if you mentioned it and we missed it. You know, we got a lot of comments going on in Facebook. Um, so if we missed it, we definitely want to give you a shout out, but we did not see it come through. Actually, so. I don't know if you know this. I censored the entire World Wide Web because I grew up in Madison and I just didn't want to see Michigan State <laughs> on so there. You just I just nixed it. <laughs> so I apologize, Coach D'Antonio. You're a great guy. We met before. I worked for the Big Ten Network, but you weren't going to make that list, and there you are. Darn it. I already knew it and then just didn't There's say no way it. I'm going to get it. Just buried, buried it. Yeah. Well, you got to give credit to Rocky Long. What incredible company to be a right part on. of in terms of the last eight seasons and really moving his team and motivating his team to a bowl game every year. It's impressive. Let's see if San Diego State can take advantage of the outstanding field position. Minute 49 to go in the third quarter, and it's still just three to nothing Aztec. It's Washington, he stood up after a gain of a yard. And I know it's week one, but I, I pose this thought to you. The next home game for San Diego State is against Utah State, yep. who averaged 50 points a game last Good year. Points. They are, San Diego State, even if the defense plays great, the offense has to improve. Yeah, they're going to have to figure this out in a hurry in a way to get some productivity on offense. Jordan Love and Utah State, they <laughs> are really good. Yeah. Jordan Love's coming back. Yeah, I mean, he's going to be real good for a long time. Agnew, and too high on the throw. Boy, we did have a defenseless receiver up in the air, but no call. Yeah, you hate to see that where a guy tries to unload on a defenseless receiver. I mean, Parker Houston was up in the air. The ball was long gone, and he still got hit pretty good. Eddie Hacker there. He's getting playing time because Collins, number two, the starting corner, he went down with an injury. He was questionable coming in today, and we have not seen number two, which means number five, Eddie Hacker, got the start. He's been contributing. Third and eight. Agnew's going to step up. He's going to take off and run, make a nifty move, and get the first down. Gutsy play there, Ryan Agnew. Picks up 13 yards on the play. This is who can be the guy one-on-one -on -one in space. When Agnew takes off here, he's got Connor Mortensen, number 35, in his sight. Watch 35 and White come into your screen. One-on-one -on -one makes the guy miss. Excellent job with his feet. Mortensen's not going to enjoy seeing that in the film room. They're going to point it out to him, too. Yes, they are. <laughs> Let him know. Washington, and this time Mortensen makes the play, along with a bunch of other Wildcats. One of the things, Ari, that we saw in that second quarter especially was the Aztecs trying to feature Jordan Bird, trying to figure out a way to get him the football. I think now becomes a great time to try to see if there's a way to get him in some space, whether that's an in around or a reverse or a short pass. He seems to have been effective with the football in his hands. You got to go back to the well. Blitz is coming. Agnew setting up the screen, and that's well defended. Had they been able to complete it, there were a lot of blockers there for Washington. But the pressure forced Agnew to make the throw early and low. We'll see all these white jerseys on Ryan Agnew. Nice job blitzing from the linebacker position. Wilson was able to get in there and get in his face as well, number 35. Three quarters complete here in San Diego. And we wanna, you wanna know more about stadium football? Take a look. Fireworks going off. There will be a big fireworks show once the game is over. The looking Sky Show. Yeah, yeah. Looking forward to that for sure. 
I'm looking forward to seeing Utah State in action next week because last year I had them three times and they had a running back, Darwin Thompson, oh, yeah. who reminded me a little bit of you, frankly. Uh, I appreciate young, you saying that. Yeah. Strong, not scared to pass pro, can run between the tackles, get out in space. He was a six round pick for the Kansas City Chiefs. A lot of six round picks don't make the team. That's right. He was so good for the Chiefs, he didn't even play in week four of the preseason. He's going to be the number two back opening week at Jacksonville awesome. from Utah State. Talk he only played one year of, of Division One ball at Utah yeah. State. Talk about taking advantage of your opportunity and Pretty really cool. being able to excel. All right, Representing the Mountain West. Yeah, we were talking about we've got lots more games. Next Saturday, we have a double header on Facebook. Catch Stony Brook at Utah State at 7.30. Then tune in for Arkansas State at UNLV at 10 p.m. Eastern Time. Both games are only on Facebook. Stadium, welcome to the game. That's a good point with next week in terms of UNLV. You have to wonder for Tony Sanchez, is this the year that it all comes together for UNLV? I think we all have kind of been waiting for them to really turn the corner, for him to have an impact but he's got most of his recruits in now. Will Tony Sanchez be able to turn the corner at UNLV? Well, they got that new stadium coming. They got so the you, new stadium. You, you, yep. That's going to change everything. Like, guys are going to want to go play where the Raiders play. But still two years away. <laughs> <laughs> Can Tony Sanchez hang on the next couple of years? Agnew had time, now buying more, and he better just get rid of this. Oh, good, he's going to throw across his body, and it's caught. Again, the third Brett Favre play of the game. <laughs> well, there's something to be said there. about Bellinger taking a risk. This isn't really one that you want your quarterback to do, especially after the play breaks down and he gets outside throwing across your body. I mean, this is a wonderful job from Daniel Bellinger coming back and being able to catch this football. An even better job with Agnew seeing him. I mean, it's and a game of 12, up, but that's risky. Don't ever do that yeah, again. That is very risky. That is a risky Even when it play. works, you can't congratulate him for that. Well, you can give him a high five for sure, but just say, okay. hey, man, don't, don't do that do it again. again. <laughs> First and ten. To Washington, they continue to do a good job against Washington. He's only gained 35 yards in the game on 13 carries. There has not been much space for him to work with. He gets the football in his hands. Now, granted, they haven't necessarily given him a bunch of opportunities outside trying to stretch the defense. Most of the plays are on the inside. He has not been able to get going, and you have to credit the Wildcats, this defensive line. The defensive line for the Wildcats is the strength of their defense. Those two anchors in Jonah Williams and Adam Rodriguez, they've been dominant tonight. Catch is made at the 18-yard line. And that's Busby making the catch. Uh, I'd like you to know a, a fun fact I was just handed. Huh. This is the first time that San Diego State has held an opponent scoreless for three quarters since the 2016 season against Hawaii where they held them scoreless for all four quarters, 55 nothing. Wow. I'm sure they're hoping for a similar result. Well, then I can guarantee they'll win. Yeah. <laughs> Especially where things are now. Yeah. <laughs> we got a whistle before the play. Timeout. Weaver State. This is their first charge of the half. Timeout on the field. All right, so timeout on the field. 13-14 left in this one. Three-point game. This feels like, again, if you're Weaver State, you just got to be thinking we got to hold them to a field goal attempt. You got a year out of six out, then you got a chance to win the game. I mean, you would appreciate a turnover, too. I yeah. mean, that, that would... <laughs> Seems a bit more ambitious, that, that would, but yeah. <laughs> that would certainly help spark some uh, some life into the team, for sure, if you're the Wildcats. Kristen, what do you have? Hey, Ari, well, while they take a timeout, we're going to show you some of your pictures that you have been posting on Instagram. You've all been using that hashtag, WSU, VS, SDSU, all game long. So we're going to take a look at some of those right now, and remember... Still plenty of time left in this game for you to see yourself on the broadcast. Mike Bates, 67. Some young Aztecs fans there. Very nice. Thanks for using that hashtag. Oh, and that's from the stadium, no less. So they're around here. I like that. We may be in Pittsburgh, but we are still supporting our Aztecs. 
like that a lot. You know, the last time we showed pictures, it was pretty heavy on Weber State, so it's good to see the, the San Diego State fans, not just active on Facebook, but also on Instagram as well. Ooh, what do you got to hear? Here, Weber, let's go, Wildcats. Thank you, Facebook, for the live broadcast. Very happy to be bringing you this live broadcast, KR Richie 001. Oh, WSU Destruction says cheering on our Wildcats at our watch party in Ogden. So everybody's still at home. Those who couldn't make the uh, the trip, I like that. That's a nice little watch party, nice place to go. Oh, baby she styles. I've been so excited to introduce you to WSU football, little man. Now that is absolutely adorable. Look I mean, at that. I'm willing funny. to take That's... second place with Layla, frankly. <laughs> that is This impressive. has been all about cute babies. We started the broadcast off with Ari's adorable daughter, Layla, in the broadcast booth. And now we've got probably one of the cutest pictures I've ever seen with that little football outfit right there. And, you know, we mentioned this a little bit earlier, but we're guessing that, you know, that Bailey She Styles is related to the Sheese brothers, the two defensive linemen who are playing their first game together today, Jared and Doug both have already done their missions and have returned to play. And Darius, as you said earlier, um, they've had another brother that played on this team. They've got two other brothers. So I wonder if at some point we'll see them on this team as well. And I think it'd be nice if Bailey could confirm, and I'm willing to go 100% that it's all the same family. Oh, I think so, yeah. <laughs> Bailey, Agnew's let us gonna know. take off and reach the ball out. Does he get the first down? It'll depend on the spot. The Aztecs sure think he did. This is what Ragnew, Agnew's been having to do here in the second half is take off when a play breaks down and there's nothing that he can see. You see all that white jerseys in his face. He just has to scramble and get outside. And a nice job in recognition, understanding where he is on the field and where the first down marker is. Stretches that football out and picks up the first down. Heads up play by Ryan Agnew. Washington with it. And thought about taking it to the outside, and instead, it's Preston Smith. He's made a lot of good plays in that taking position. Yeah, you've seen seven come down and make quite a few plays, especially in one on one matchups against backs. He's been playing really well and outstanding this game. And that's why I, I have to question here. I know Washington went in towards the second quarter, went into the locker room. Coach mentioned it was an ankle injury. I wonder if he's full speed because typically when he gets that football, if he's got a chance to get outside, he's taking it. And we didn't see him do that in that last play. Washington got through the first wave of would-be tackles. Well, they didn't blow the whistle. I thought he was down. Did he keep his – was it just his hand that hit the ground and not the elbow or the knee? If so, great balance from Jawan Washington. That's a nifty move. It looked like his elbow did hit the ground. Well, then that's where he should be down. Tried to keep himself up. We'll take another look at this here. Washington gets the football. Nice patience in the hole. I mean, he was actually down, and then the play kept yeah. going. He decided to keep going, but when that elbow is down. That's over. That's the play it. is over right there. Look and that. then he State gets the benefit of a generous spot. Third down. Big third down for the Aztecs. Ball's out and recovered by Ryan Agnew. And see, I I know that I, I grew up in a power system or as a running back, so I'm not trying to knock on the spread. It's just in the red zone, it is such a hard offense to do, especially when you have to hand the football off or decide if Agnew is going to keep it in that case with the run pat, with the run option. But it's just it's hard to be effective down here as a runner in the spread formation. Okay, you can still get under center. There's no I don't rules against why they that. Don't. <laughs> There's just nothing against that. They have yet to do that in the red zone. 29-yard attempt. And the kick is up, and it is good. Nicely done. Ariza connects on the field goal. And the lead is 6 to nothing. So the redshirt freshman delivers. But... Weber State still only down six. They're still in this game for sure. I think this is a really big series for the Wildcats. Can they finally put together a methodical drive? If they could put something together and eat up a lot of clock right here, put a touchdown on the board, put six points on the board, seven points on the board, that'd be a lot of pressure for the Aztecs to try to close this thing out offensively. All right, a 13-play drive. They go 40 yards. They take six minutes off the clock, and they get the 29-yard field goal. Well, Rocky Long knows 
that for him it's about defense, and it, let me tell you, his defense has done a great job. Look at that, Brady Hoke, the former head huh. coach at San Diego State. He's also the head coach at Michigan. He was looking for a job. Now remember, Rocky Long was his defensive coordinator. They go way back? Way back. That's when I first joined the Mountain West 11 seasons ago. And now Brady was looking for a job, and Rocky's like, we know each other, we like each other, and now Brady Hoke, the defensive line coach. 12 seasons as a head coach at the FBS level, including the Mountain West Coach of the Year in 2010, and that vaulted him into the Michigan job. Yeah, what's really awesome about it is that since he has so much experience, to have him as a defensive line coach at a time when that's the most inexperienced position on defense for the Aztecs is a huge bonus. So they've been playing well defensively already. They got an inexperienced defensive line. You, you insert a legendary coach like Brady Hoke. That's why they've had so much success early here on the defensive line. And Brady Hoke is young enough that he could resurrect himself as oh, another sure. head coach for sure. again. Very well liked when he was during his time here. Yeah, he can Kristen, make another run. would you like to add to the conversation? I would, when we talked to uh, defensive coordinator Zach Arnett, I thought it was funny, guys. He said, uh, we said, you know, how does it work with Brady Hoke in there? And he said, oh, I don't try to micromanage him. He says he's been coaching longer than I've been alive. He said, I just try to soak up everything I can. And he talked, as you guys know, um, about how great it was to have him and his expertise and his knowledge, both for the coaching staff and for the players. Uh, good stuff, Chris. And, yeah, it's definitely a win for San Diego State to get Brady Hoke back on the staff. Davis on the return. And Davis is still on his feet. Davis gets to the 40-yard line. Great field position on the 40-yard return. Finally get an opportunity to get loose here. Yeah. Josh Davis really trying to make an impact on this game. An excellent return. All right, let's take a look back, Gary. It's at the last time that Weber State beat an FBS team. That was 1993 at Nevada. And you see, not a real good record in season openers on the road. But keep in mind, they're almost always playing up a whole level. Exactly. Normally in FBS. Uh, in a couple in weeks, they're, they're going to Nevada. They're going back. They sure are. Yes. That's right. I'm Two sure Mountain West opponents. I'm sure score. they would want to be 2-0 and in the Mountain West after week three. All kinds of misdirection. Ends up an incomplete pass. And this was an easy catch. For Isaiah Jackson, but Constantine didn't make it simple. You gotta, if you have, you're only four or five feet from a guy, they always tell quarterbacks this. If you're only four or five feet from him, you don't have to rifle the football in there. Just a nice touch pass would be great, but Constantine put a little bit too much juice on that throw, and it a little more challenging for Isaiah Jackson than it needed to be. This is a stat Weber State's not gonna like. First down, it's five punts, eight. Not good. And this drive started at their own 40. They're going the wrong direction. And that is complete. And that's Ames who makes the catch. He earlier in the game attempted a pass, which fell incomplete on a, a really well-designed trick play that unfortunately they weren't able to convert. Smash out by Ames getting outside and getting open, planting on that foot. Good tackle by Cassidy in some space. Brings up third down. Third and four. Big play here for the Wildcats. Keep in mind, they've got Kevin Smith in the backfield instead of Josh Davis. He's number four next to the quarterback. And that ball is batted down at the line of scrimmage. They can't come up with a single first down. And they thought about it for a moment. They are electing to punt it. If, the, if they have a really good fake punt, I think this would be the <laughs> this time This would be the for time it. Well, for look it, at where yeah. they are on the field, yeah. right? Decent place on the field for it. If you got one, now they do have Josh Davis on the field for the punt team. Well, you see that a lot at FCS. Most of their best players got to play, play special, special teams. teams. That's yeah. right. Lloyd on for the punt. And it lands short, but it's going to take a Wildcat bounce. 
And it will be down at the 11-yard line. So now it's up to their defense Try to, to come up with in a this stop. Game. Yep. Because time is starting to run out for sure. Let's take a look at the Ring of Honor program. Let's take a closer look. Are you a combat guy? I think you know the answer to that question. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're real close friends. You just tried to team me up to look soft. That's it, man. Yeah. That was all. It That's was a, all to throw you under the bus. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> I can feel the bus Not going over me. Ba -boom, a combat ba -boom, boom. guy for sure. That is already one. Hey, you were the guy who told me when you were playing you didn't like to get hit. Well, I let me let me preface that. Not saying that I mean I don't know who likes to get hit, especially as like an offensive player. I don't think anyone actually enjoys getting hit. I think it was more just trying to conserve yourself, so not taking every hit, especially ones that are on the sideline. That's what we were what we were talking about. Now I think in combat that would be harder to achieve. Yeah, a little harder to do that. Unless you minutes. just took it to people. All right, it's, it's, look, the cat's oh, watching the game. Look at I that. Mean, look at that. Yeah. Do Checking you think out the, the cat stats? wants to see more offense? I believe the cat would like to see some more offense for sure. Appreciate him checking out the game, though. Do you think the cat was able to post the picture on its own? <laughs> if it had a selfie stick behind its back, maybe. <laughs> That'd be the way to do that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Having a little fun for sure. This is a big moment right now for the Aztecs on offense. Now, this, these are the times when get under center and run the football. I love this formation right now, Ari. We haven't seen this much in the game. Under center with a fullback and a running, and a back. running back. This looks Classic like. Classic Rocky Long. Yeah. This is what we want to see. I love it if he just said, you know what, let's just do what we <laughs> did for the last drive and just take I told all 952 off the clock. Where, where is the ripcord? Where is it? it looks like it, it, it got, it's starting to get pulled here in the fourth quarter. I don't know, Agnew might be changing the play. <laughs> Give to Washington. And tick, tick, tick. Yep. Only gains a couple. Run the play clock. Hike the ball with two seconds on the clock and run it two more That's times. right. Classic Rocky Long offense here. Stay under center, run the football. And Jeff Horton, the offense quarter in his fourth season. Also been a head coach at Nevada and at UNLV. And, you know, he talked about recruiting running backs. He, they need to be tough. Run downhill. Well, this is the moment. You're up 6 to nothing. <laughs> That's why you in recruit the fourth these quarter, guys. Run downhill. And don't hurt yourself. But, nope. unfortunately, we have seen this really on both sides in terms yep. of offensive lines. We've seen false starts Offense, on both sides. Five-yard penalty. In terms of cadence, Second cadences. Down. And guys being set or a little antsy. See right there to the right. The offensive line. I thought that was a tight end down there. It looked there. like it yeah. was, was Parker Houston, but it hard wasn't to tell 77. Which tight end. That guy's a lot bigger than the guy who had the ball starting. <laughs> now you put yourself in a tough situation where you kind of got to go back with a good old spread shotgun. Well, they're going to play that kind of off coverage. Go ahead and throw it out on the outside as Cody makes the catch. That was a pretty large split from Maxwell Anderson there. And you have to think, one of the things on offense is you want to take advantage of opportunities that the defense gives you. But if you look at 21, cornerback for the Wildcats, Maxwell Anderson, he's in because of the injury to Collins. He is a true freshman. He is 155 pounds on an island by himself. All right, third down. Seems biggest, like a great opportunity yeah. to go at this guy. Biggest third down of the game for the Aztecs. Agnew looking. And that is knocked down. Jonah Williams, number 94. He's been really good tonight. <laughs> it's been just fantastic. Showing you why he's first team all-conference in terms of the big sky. 
he has been dominant up front defensively. Agnew. Well, our whole little thing about they were going to go old school there and did, yeah. didn't happen. Well, it didn't happen also because of the, the false penalty. start. Yep. Yeah, the false start hurts you. You got to get back into that. But they didn't run any time off of the clock with this series in terms of the assets. Heiklin on to punt. Davis. I'm not sure you kick it at Davis, even though this is a great punt. Oh, and Davis is going to fair catch it. That is that is turning the field over right there with an outstanding punt. Wonderful punt. All right, let's do our fan of the game here. We don't know who it's going to be, so just the anticipation. Oh, where's Waldo? Look at that. Nice. Yeah, saying hello to everyone, real real politics, really political. Did you rock a Waldo suit? No, and nor was he my fan of the game. I got outvoted. <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't win he on didn't my vote. He didn't make your no. top list, no. no? Constantine, no place to go, wrapped up and brought down. Now, here's what's been interesting for the Wildcats on offense, especially these last two series. We've seen Josh Davis in special teams, in the kicking game. Yep. Where's he been team. at running back? He has not been in at running back. Instead, it has been number four, Kevin Smith. Explain now, that to I me. Josh Davis know, was the national freshman of the year. He won the Jerry Rice Award. If he was injured, he would not be in on right, special that's my teams. Point. So I'm just I'm, I'm wondering what's going on there. Maybe that's something that Kristen could look into, but he has not been in at running back in the last two series. Constantine on target, first down Wildcats. That was a good looking throw to Isaiah Jackson. Good catch from Jackson, nice job settling down in that zone there. He's a smart player. They use Jackson in a variety of positions. He can play the slot, he can put him outside, he can come down in motion, very versatile player. By the way, I felt the tension rise in the stadium after that first down because now you look at the clock, the Wildcats get this drive going. There could be real trouble here. Big time. They can get the first down here because this is a team that, I mean, they're just looking to steal one. You have to wonder, this might be four down territory too with the time on left on the clock. Blitz is coming. They get it out now. He did not get the first down. Great tackle by Tariq Thompson as Malone makes the catch. But don't you think they got to go for it here on fourth and I short? I think you have to. I mean, the way the offense has played, there's only six minutes left in this game. Now they're, they're going to punt. They feel like they've I mean, they been playing well everybody. defensively. they brought everybody. It's a nice job by Thompson in space, making sure that after Malone caught the football, he had nowhere to go. Hey, credit there to, to Rocky Long to bring all those guys. I thought momentum was shifting, and I, I thought this stadium was about to get real nervous. I'm going to let that bounce, and right now it's taking a Wildcat bounce, so they're going to have San Diego State pinned back at their own six-yard line, exactly six minutes to go in the game, and a six-point lead. Marist is taking on Georgetown Saturday at 12.30. Make sure to tune in as Georgetown hosts Marist, you catch that game on stadium, the only 24-7 network available on both television and digital devices without a cable subscription. Stadium, welcome to the game. Now what I wonder here for the Aztecs is, well, they've already shown it now. At one point they were thinking about going back to the power offense to try to run the clock out. Looks like they've gotten back into the spread formation. I'll hand it off and nothing doing on first down. Connor Morton sitting in on the stop. It's Washington, no place to go. And I have to tell you, Ari, like just visually what you're seeing, when you're in the power position versus being behind the quarterback in the shotgun, it's just different in terms of your angles with how you're getting the football and what you see. It's a huge difference. It's a huge yeah. difference. So I I just feel like it, they're, they're putting more pressure on the backs to make to adjust how, how they see and how they run plays when they get the football. But right now, this spread formation has not been very effective for the Aztecs. 
And they're going to try to throw it, and it's complete, but they don't get the first down. Smart, though, to stay in bounds. That's a better yeah, one. Kobe there. Smith stays in bounds to keep the clock moving, but this, this is the third down of the game so far coming up. Smith has been playing well for them. He played a lot last year as a true freshman. Able to get the football here, stay in bounds smartly, keep that clock going. The Aztecs have not been able to move the chains at all. It looks like now they're going back into the power formation. Third downs have been tough, just four for 16. Agnew's going to go ahead and let that play clock wind down. That's the veteran thing to do from the senior quarterback. And good hard running, and it appears it's very close to a first down. And the fans are cheering, and let's see the chain gang move. They're Looks moving, like they first and 10. I mean, now they can eat off a bunch more time off the clock, and the Wildcats have just two timeouts left. Getting back into that power formation, their bread and butter. You like to see that, especially at this point in the game. Because right now, Ari, the Wildcats know you're going to run the ball. The question is just who's going to be the stronger in one-on-one? -on -one? Who's, uh, who's going to win that one-on-one -on -one battle? If you're Agnew, why you, there's no reason to hike the football here. There's 15 seconds on the play clock. I, that I don't understand. And why well, throw it? Didn't complete, and that stops the clock. A little less than four minutes to go in the game, right? I mean, if the clock's running, why not let the play clock go down to two? And the power has been working when they've gotten in it. They've gotten two to three yards, which is what you want to do at this point in time, keep the clock going, take as much time off as possible and pick up a first down. But we've just seen them, and I, and I don't know, maybe, maybe the right word is they're almost forcing the spread sometimes because they've sort of changed modes there. But, boy, it, it would make a lot of sense to stay in that power, run the football, try to run the clock out. Second and ten, they're going to throw it again. Agnew, and that's knocked up in the air, and it was almost picked off. And it's going to be third down. And so they could have run two plays. We'd be at under three minutes sure, right now. without a doubt, yeah. We'd be in a different position right now for the Wildcats. Let's take another look at this. Who gets their hand on the football? Big time right in the middle there. That's Jaden Palauni. Good job getting that hand up and knocking the football down. But he's made a couple plays tonight. He's been good. Let's see his in the interior defense. Third down. Two passing plays. 